Hypocrisy. Hey, what's up, guys? Welcome to Lost Blaining the Interwebs. I am your fatigued host, Nick Ricada of Ricada Law, a small law firm in central Minnesota. And with me today is a very special guest, PJ Media's Megan Fox. Hey, I'm so happy to be here. I'm just so Good. happy to be here. I swear, I'm more <laughs> excited and nervous to be here than I was when I went on Tucker. And uh, <laughs> I, I really, and I was like shitting myself going on that show. But uh, even though there's like 3 million viewers, they're all pretty much senior citizens. So they forgot it the second they saw it. And I'm sure that this audience is much younger <laughs> and Sometimes. way cooler. <laughs> Sometimes. Uh, but other times they're old. Like other times... I'm like, God, you guys are so old and uncool. So, um, and, and I'm sitting here, I'm the coolest, youngest person around. And the chat's just like walking around with their walkers. They've got the tennis balls on the bottom. Like, I wouldn't want to make too much noise. That's, uh, that's this chat. If I've ever, if I've ever heard of anybody being old, um, but <laughs> well, welcome to the show. I'm so glad to have you. Uh, you have been covering extensively, uh, the Johnny Depp and Amber Heard trial, and we're going to be talking uh, about that. We'll be talking about your coverage of it, um, and also, in general, the media's coverage of this trial, how it's kind of changed, what your observations are about, like, who you know, are their factions? Are they lining up with public perception? Because I see a bunch of different sort of angles to all of that. Like, I... I I see them going with the public perception, at least in so far as the memes and the clicks. But then I also will see surprising articles that seem very coordinated by maybe a handsy PR guy. Um, so I, I'd love to get <laughs> your, your idea on all of this stuff. Yeah, and, uh, and it, it's it's fantastic uh, because it is we're being gaslit in real time. This is a, to me, it's an exercise in, in learning about what is gaslighting because we're all experiencing it in real time. And it's so strong. The gaslighting is so strong. Uh, it's happening in the trial. And then it happens when we turn the trial off and we look at the media reports. We know what we think. It's like what you said the other night. You were like, you don't need a body language expert. You know <laughs> what you are seeing. None of us need to be told that she's lying. We know that she is lying. Um, and everyone seems to know this. And then you turn on the news and it's a whole different story. Um, I've been monitoring the news every day after the trial. I go immediately onto Google and I do a news search for the top three results. And you know that those top three results are pretty much placed there. You pay for those spots. It's, yep. It has nothing to do with clicks. Okay, nothing. Uh, so well, when, you go on, when you go on the news search and you put in the last 24 hours... Uh, and the top three slots are from 12 hours ago. And then the next slot down is from one hour ago. You know what, you know, what's happening. Uh, so, so, yeah. so yeah. So what have you been seeing? Okay. So what I've been seeing is, uh, I've been kind of counting and, and I've been live streaming it every day. So after the trial ends, I go straight to Google and I'm, I'm looking at the headlines. People don't click on headlines. So it matters, uh, what the headline is. Uh, it's really just the headlines that they're after. So any PR yep. team is really just out there to get decent headlines because they know no one's reading it. And what I've seen is uh, after the first, maybe it was like a week into the trial, uh, the news article started to really start to show, uh, I think it was right after she fired her PR team, actually, <laughs> strangely enough. Yeah. And the news article started to really kind of twist and look similar to me. I actually was recording live when I saw a People Magazine article, and I wrote an article about this on PJ Media. Um, I saw People Magazine and it said, it didn't use the word allegedly, and it allowed, it was that Dr. Hughes, as soon as Dr. Hughes got up on the stand and she made all that, th that crazy testimony that sounded like she was in the room, remember that? Yeah, Dr. And, Hughes and is <laughs> he the- threw uh... her across the room. And he right, grabbed, and then she went like this with her hand, like like she used her like a he used her like a finger puppet or something, uh, and she's doing this like she was there witnessing it. 
the, I knew what the media was going to do. The media was going to take her words and turn them into headlines right. and say witness as if she was an eyewitness. And that's exactly what they did. Uh, it said, Amber Heard recalls first time Johnny Depp hit her, uh, witness says. So you think witness is an eyewitness when you see that headline. But when you click on it, then obviously, and it doesn't say paid witness because she was a paid right. witness. Um, it doesn't, doesn't say expert witness, doesn't no, say anything. Just witness. Just, yep. And I watched them in real time change that headline to allegedly hit. And I was yeah. pointing out to the audience, I'm like, look at this headline. It doesn't say allegedly. It literally states it as a fact. This is defamatory. I go click the refresh button. Sure enough, allegedly pops up. Yeah, that they probably got a very quick phone call. <laughs> right? like, oh, oh yeah, I'm sure. You know that he's got somebody on his legal team that's watching these things and making those phone calls because they're going to be next. I mean, if he wins, he's going to probably sue whoever it is that's repeating this stuff. Um, or maybe not. He should just go to that island and and just get well. Well, if he if he wins, um, it, it's not about the money. If if he wins in the court of public opinion, um, I don't think, uh, which to me, what that means is if Johnny Depp has a producer meet with his agent and say, we got a deal for you. We've got a movie. Let's do it. That's when Johnny knows he can go to the island. He can chill out. Doesn't need to sue anybody. He can put this to rest because he's been going a long time. Uh, I mean, just since the UK trial, it's been uh, four years now of just nonstop um work in litigation this trial wasn't filed this year this trial was filed back in what 2020 i think uh or, or something, while. something like that and and so it was like it went from uk trial straight into this one and it's just busy 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 and he's got to be you know i'm sure he loves all of his lawyers very much all the time but he's got to be tired of these people and he just wants to kind of take a rest. That's been imagine. my experience. I would imagine. And I had came up with an idea today. And you have to tell me what you think about this. What if the jury, and I was thinking of ways the jury could get out of this uh, without her being able to appeal so that she could actually be out of his life. What if they came back with a guilty verdict for her, but only ordered her to pay him one dollar? Yeah. She couldn't appeal that, could she? Because she would suffer no monetary loss. And well, she if, could. What would she for what? What would she appeal it for to overturn the guilty verdict? It'd be, it'd be a stretch. <laughs> well, if you yeah, if you didn't suffer anything, who's going to hear that? Who's going to hear like, well, but you didn't lose anything. Yeah, that's uh, well, I mean, either way in the U.S., you get an automatic appeal if you want. So they have to hear the case, um, but you're going to spend tons of money and maybe have nothing to do with, with uh, nothing to go on. You can appeal a jury verdict. Your, your argument is that no reasonable jury observing the facts presented in the case could have come to the conclusion that this happened. So typically what you've got there is you've got um, where a jury really likes someone, but there was a failure to elicit the facts required for the elements and then you can you go in, uh, you argue this fact for this element never came in, period. There's no proof of this particular thing. Like if Johnny never, ever proved damages, for example, um, although they've argued it's defamation per se, but but hypothetically speaking, he never proved damages. Then they could go and say, nope, this fact never came before the court. So jurors either got it from the outside or they just were attracted to his charisma and they vo they voted for him because they like him. And uh, so we need the court to rule as a matter of law. So they, they could make that type of appeal. It'll lose 99.99% of the time. But she could drag it out that way. I think it'd be, if she got a $1 verdict, you know, Johnny's going to be happy. She'll be, I don't know that she'll be happy, but uh, her lawyers would be strongly advising her to just let it go at that point. I would think so. Yeah. I mean... But I, I don't I don't know if they do the one dollar verdict thing. But the other way out of this, the the simple way out of of most of this stuff for her is if he went, let's say the jury goes the opposite way. They go, Johnny wins, you get fifty million dollars, everything he asked for, because we want punitive damages on this vapid Hollywood starlet who thinks money is someone else's object, right? Um, 
And so they go, $50 million. She can't pay that. She'll never have $50 million to pay to someone else. Uh, she could always settle it with Johnny Depp. I mean, he doesn't need to collect any money at all. Um, he could just take the paper, privately settle with her, non-disclosure agreement on the amount, and just walk away. Uh, and that could be great. He could even make a positive statement for her if he wanted to. Whatever he wants to do. Because I think for him, it's about clearing his name. And, uh, and I don't think he, I mean, maybe he does, but he doesn't strike me as super vindictive about what happens to her afterwards, you know? Mm, yeah, no, I don't think so. I think he just wanted people to know he didn't do these things that she said he did. Uh, right. I was a little concerned when I heard Runkle today, though, about Josh Drew's testimony. Uh, and so because of I'm it, not. <laughs> I put together... I put together a video of Josh. I called it Josh Drew v. LA, the LAPD. And I put his testimony back to back with the testimonies of uh, the LAPD police officers and the body cam footage. I found so many inconsistencies and outright mm -hmm. lies, um, at, unless you're going to say we believe uh, Josh Drew, the freeloading Yahoo living in Johnny's house over uh, four LAPD officers. He's a hospitality consultant and they shoot black people. <laughs> <laughs> I just, I just, I just can't like they, they didn't even know who any of these people were. So they had no skin in this game. They're not on Johnny's payroll. They they're like, they're just trying to get to their next actual violent call that has actual bullets flying. And they're like, what are we doing up here in these ri ridiculous penthouses? Like, what is right. <laughs> There's nothing happening. They're the like, next time, can they invite us in for a drink? Because, damn, this looks cool. <laughs> this place is sweet. Uh, yeah, no, right. I, yeah, it, it, so I, I, I love Uncle of the Bailey. I have some disagreements with how much weight he gave Josh Drew's testimony. I think um, he, he certainly is observing the jurors in the room change their attitudes, perk up, and listen. But that's... The only interpretation you can get watching the jury, you don't know if they're listening because they're interested and maybe they are. You frankly don't know if they're listening because it's just the first man they've heard testify in a while. Uh, well, and also versus... Rocky Pennington just put everyone to sleep. Uh, right. oh my, why was she falling out of the frame like like this? What? what, <laughs> so... what? Um, imagine sitting there as the jury. Did you did you see? <laughs> no, <laughs> I don't remember that. <laughs> what was going on with her? And she what? was she was iced out on something. I mean, it was <sighs> awkward. I don't know if she was like super nervous. So I, I noticed a big difference in Rocky Pennington between the two days of questioning, right? Like Johnny oh, Depp's absolutely. team. She's she's like subdued. And I, here's my thought. She professes neutrality. She knows she's not neutral. She may not even like Amber Heard anymore, but she's got to be worried about perjury. So she might have medicated for the Johnny Depp testimony, knowing that it could get aggressive. It could get um, tricky. And she was really nervous. So she takes a Xanax. And she she just suffers <laughs> through this day. Falls out of the right. picture frame though. Like at one point, she's just like, um, like I thought she was gonna fall asleep. I really thought yeah. she was gonna fall asleep. She's is she on the nod, as Johnny would say? I mean, my God, it, it looked like either like a an anti anxiety sort of thing, or maybe edibles. Um, it, <laughs> she ate one so, too many, and that's the one that does it. <laughs> I see. I've done this in real life. I do not consume. Uh, marijuana products with, with any regularity, but I was at a convention in Canada and it's legal up in Canada. And uh, a friend of mine came in to came in to meet with me and my wife. And he's like, Hey, uh, I've got some edibles. You want to try them? And I'm sure this will be fun. I'm at the convention and I eat these things. And then I'm talking to people in a circle and suddenly I didn't remember getting to this circle at all or who anybody was. And I'm like, oh, my God. Oh, no. I had to look I've like Rocky Pennington. Mistake. Yes. And it doesn't go away. <laughs> These things last forever. So I'm sitting there for the rest of the day like, um, okay. 
it was it was awful. That's I that's why I hate him. But it kind of looked like that to me. Like she was just she was just turned down to half speed while the rest of the world moved on. And um, <laughs> but then for the next day, she was rather snappy. She's emotional. She's involved in the whole thing. Uh, I felt like she was a better actor than Amber Heard. Um, but but she's like crying. That that pissed me off because the crying was like, you, dude, you testified to this yesterday. These exact same pictures, these exact she same at the scenarios. Same pictures, yeah. same pictures, and had no reaction. And also, was it Rottenborn that was questioning her? He immediately says to her, giving her direction, directing the witness, saying things like, "I know this testimony coming up really upsets you." Start now, crying I'm, now. Start, start crying, crying now. That, that, that's your <laughs> that's your cue. Get the tears ready. I know it's very difficult for you. And he did that several times. At the end of her testimony, he said, I know this has been really hard for you. That's her cue to go into how this affected me and to get those sniffles up. I will say one thing for Rocky. She's a far better crier than Amber Heard. She oh, way had, better. She had better acting classes because she was at least swallowing and her nose got red. So I actually believed wait, did I, that came out wrong. No. <laughs> it did. It did. I was like, well. There are those acting classes too. <laughs> that came out so wrong. That was bound to happen, though. I know which one I'm going for. No, I'm just <laughs> <laughs> the chat's all dibs on Rocky. Uh, <laughs> of course they are. Oh uh, no! But... Oh no! See, it happens just like that. I'm going to get canceled before the night is over. <laughs> That's I the goal. <laughs> completely canceled. This is it. This is my moment. <laughs> yeah, turn. I, I didn't tell you, but I've taken on a new client. Uh, his name is David Shane. And so <laughs> <laughs> good luck with that one. Good I don't know luck. who he is. He's some weird bald guy. <laughs> he keeps looking at my chest and I don't understand why. Uh, <laughs> but uh, no, <laughs> but no, it was, it was definitely this very weird, um, shift for her uh, obviously rottenborn is giving her cues to what's coming to how he needs her to react to what they want but yeah, I, I mean is that allowed i mean it was so obvious and what is the deal can i ask you because my sister's a lawyer she's been joining me on my stream every day and she comes on and she she answers our legal questions but i i didn't ask her this and it's been driving me crazy these recorded depositions i, I don't understand why anyone would agree to this why would either side, uh, but especially Johnny's side, agree to these when they can't get these idiots up on the stand, get nail them down in front of the jury? Why would they agree to allowing this snooze fest nonsense? And then they didn't do a good job, I think, with whatever they objected to. And they didn't do a good job getting stuff thrown out before these were put right. in. So why, why, why didn't they have them in person? Um, so Virginia does not have the power to compel someone out of state to appear in Virginia. That's why. So that Ugh. you cannot, you cannot subpoena someone in LA and bring them to Virginia by order of the court. They can <sighs> only order a deposition. They, they have that much power. So, so that's why they have some of these. It's one of the trade-offs of going to Virginia versus what about doing letting this in them LA. What about having them do, you know, a Zoom thing into the court live? They can't do they that. Can't, they can't compel them to do it. That's because unfortunate. They, ha they have to willingly submit to the authority of Virginia to be. Um, Is to that be every brought... state? Is every state like that? I don't think so. Um, I think. Huh. <sighs> Boy, because well, it, it really ruins everything. It just does. And, and I feel like yeah. I didn't even go to law school, but I'm like, I, I think I could have done a little bit better. So I, <laughs> I don't do, uh, I don't do interstate, um, you know, litigation. I cover it, but I don't, I don't do it. So some of these things aren't in my normal practice areas, but my understanding of how they work would be your state has the power to issue a subpoena and it's honored through this, um, the constitutional provision that says that states honor the lawful orders of other states, but the state has to have the power to do it in the first place. So if someone wants to depose me or bring me into court, they can, uh, they can file it in their court 
They then have to bring that order to Minnesota. They have to comply with Minnesota's rules of service um, and, and jurisdictional issues. And then they can uh, get the Minnesota court to enforce that order on behalf of someone else. But that's a lot of places where you can fight it too. So I could fight in Minnesota. The other person could fight it in their state, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. So many rules. Right. So, um, so, and, and, you know, they're, they're the type of clients who would have the money to do that if, if you had to do that. And especially for critical witnesses. But I think what they just did was they said, uh, you know, or Virginia, I doesn't, I don't think they have that power at all, um, to compel. So it's entirely voluntary. So they have to, um, just kind of take what they get. And if they can't get someone, well, then the, the depositions are evidence. They're go, they're made under oath. Yeah. They're made under the rules so they can come in. Um, but, but then they have the, you know, they have the timeline limits and all of that stuff that, that helps keep it pared down. They have to either agree on those edits or get a judge to rule on the objections, but you're right. I think their objections in the, uh, in these depositions are not as good. And I'll, I'll, suggest why at deposition almost every question gets an objection um almost everyone uh objection to form form of the question because it's it's kind of a catch-all and then uh then they will also lodge specific objections and they get really tiring and tedious and if you're just objecting to form on everything you may not be as uh prompt at objecting really really well so there are a bunch of hearsay objections for uh, Josh Drews or whatever. Josh Drews, right? Is his name? Yeah, Josh Drew. Yeah, yeah, Josh Drew. There were a bunch of hearsay things that came in. They told me, he told me, they told me that weren't Johnny Depp. It was just these random other people. And I'm like, these should all have been thrown out. Yeah, I out. noticed that. And, and one weren't. of them was a really critical statement that he made that should not have come in at all. So, um, you know, that that's the type of stuff that, they missed, I don't know, maybe they just lost on the objection. That's possible. Um, but, but they, they missed some things, uh, in it. So, but, but again, going, going back to where this spiraling question came from was, uh, I think at the end of the day, this trial is going to be decided on Johnny Depp and Amber Heard's testimonies. Like to God, me, I hope so. I, I can't see how, um, a juror, and this is, this is what you have to do. A juror is sitting there. They listen to Amber Heard and they go, I don't believe her. I'm on, I'm, I'm in Johnny Depp's camp. And then this guy comes in by a video deposition from 2019 who they don't get to meet or read or see. And he says something that's going to convince him and says, you know, I didn't believe Amber Heard, but I believe what this guy says about Amber Heard <laughs> And that for me is a problem because his story doesn't support her testimony very well. Um, he just has a couple things where he's believable and he can be believable, but if it doesn't I found match him, not credible, but charismatic. So yeah, he's definitely charismatic. Yeah, I thought he was very charismatic. And so he made you sit up and listen. I snickered a few times during his testimony. I thought he answered a few things uh, quite well where I thought, well, that was a good a good answer. He was quick. He didn't bore you to death, uh, and he he appeared to be telling the truth, unless you knew about the body cam footage and the police testimony. If I hadn't heard already heard those things, I would have been like, oh, hmm, well, this is <laughs> concerning. But the second that he said those things that I knew the police had already debunked, uh, yeah, I mean. Uh, okay, I'm fine. No, no, I was fine. In he was. Soy, yes, but he had a. Uh, when you he compare had, him to Io Tillett, he relaxed. Right. Yeah, he's relaxed. Yeah, he's telling jokes. His audio. This is stupid, but his audio was decent. The camera pixelation was better. Yes, like and and what, sharper. You guys. Uh, you guys know how this works. You guys are all on YouTube. I mean, when you, you have two people telling you a story about the same thing, it may be petty, but when the audio of one is him and the audio of the other is Rocky Pennington sounding kind of like this is muffled. <laughs> there's some static. You're going to pick the guy who sounds better. Like it's, it, it, it's the way of, of how video broadcast works. It's why broadcast studios pay 
millions of dollars to have top end sound. Yes. Uh, it's matters. one of the sound is in, in my opinion, for news and information delivery sound, sound is more important than video and video is, is there's the, the next thing but behind video is miles down the road uh, on any technical front, but sound is critical and he sounded fine. Um, he sounded better than just about any of the other video witnesses we've seen. And it was snappier. That was really important. They got, they got his testimony done in about an hour. Um, whereas the other, snappiness like, of it, the snappiness yeah. of it was very important. That jury is bored out of their minds with these deposit, with the video depositions. They are falling asleep. Literally, you heard Runkle say one of them actually did fall asleep. Taking out his hearing aid, that's a bad sign. You, <laughs> you do not want to. I'm done with this shit. <laughs> You do not want a member of the jury removing his hearing aid. That's like, uh, so I mean, you know, that he got the, I don't mean the guy is somebody, you know, he's not the life of the party or anything, but he's certainly was the life of this party. This, yeah. It was horrible. Okay. Wait, can we talk about, can we talk about the, um, the blood sucking vampire that he had living in his house? All of them. Wait, they, I realized all... they were all blood suckers, but the one in particular who was the one who was living there in secret, hiding in the closet for two weeks. Yeah, that lady. With... <laughs> I'm sorry, but we were with joking. the elven ears. Yes, yes. We were joking before she even got to this part. Me in the chat and we were all joking that she was some kind of succubus. And like she, someone was like, she looks like a shapeshifter. And then someone else was like, she was hiding on the ceiling. Like that's where she went was on the ceiling. I made the comment right before she go, comes in with this witch stuff. I say, you know what would have been what, what Johnny should have come in with? He should come barging in there with a with a string of garlic, some holy water, and a wooden <laughs> stake because his house was not only taken over by squatters, apparently they were all demonic squatters. And then she goes, while I'm in the middle of telling this joke, she says, well, we did a grounding exercise and we cast a circle <laughs> in the Oh, so so it turns out that the cuddle puddle is not a cuddle puddle it's a coven puddle amber heard is the head witch they think that they're in the craft it's her and rocky pennington all these girls with these dyed black hair and the super yeah. white skin and the, like they literally think that they are witches they were literally casting spells in his penthouses i call them the witches of penthouses one through five <laughs> and they were literally casting spells and then do you remember when we get to the to the to the acting coach the oh my god this woman made me want to grab says, an axe remember she goes she says yes the atmosphere changed johnny johnny became well much darker and and he would sit in a dark room well you know why he was sitting in a dark room ma'am because he was being attacked by the witches of penthouses one through five <laughs> apparently they were she, casting spells all day on this poor man she goes off into that screed and i'm like you're the bitch who wrote that shitty movie oculus aren't you like this <laughs> it's getting darker everywhere he's like stop it stop this this is nonsense yeah. this is Dime store <laughs> novel uh, horror fiction coming I don't out know. here. After hearing about the casting circle, I think I believe it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I think I believe it was getting darker. He was exactly. losing his mind and he finally snapped and made the, it was the best day of his life when he barged in there and ran at them and told them to leave his house. He was probably speaking in tongues and Latin at the same time. <laughs> Could you he imagine? needed an exorcist. Yeah. <laughs> <He's> like, <"There's laughs> <a> vault. <laughs> I, would, I now want to see a movie. I want to see a Van Helsing starring Johnny Depp and that guy he sent the text to about burning and drowning witches. Because now we know why he he was wanting to burn her and drown her because he believes she's a witch. Now well, the joke a, makes more sense. Someone sent me footage of Johnny Depp storming into this house just now. Are you ready? <laughs> I can't wait. Unacceptable. <laughs> <laughs> He's done. Uh, oh, oh, God.
God. <laughs> Paul Bettany, you know the... thank you. The chat just gave me his name. Yes, I want Van oh, yeah, a new Van Helsing with Paul Bettany and Johnny Depp. And I want at the end, I want them to oh. drown and then burn the witch. <laughs> A buddy cop comedy parody Van Helsing with Paul Bettany and Johnny Depp might be, that might be, you know, a $500 million comedy right there. That, that sounds great. Uh, I would love to do that. God could be played by Chris Rock. Um. <laughs> and you know what I think, you know, that, that wood thing, lawn and lumber, he showed the bed, somebody yeah. pried a, a wooden stake off of it. It probably was, <laughs> it Johnny. was Johnny Depp. He was Johnny. trying to protect himself was... from the demonic succubuses in his house. You know, um, <laughs> I can, I can explain the bed thing. <laughs> I discovered, um, a nest in one of my penthouses and um, I had to pry a stake to wield against these, um, you see them in LA sometimes, um, monsters of the night. <laughs> now you're selling me on the story. I was sitting there and she's like telling the story of when Johnny Depp barges in and rushes at her and I'm like, I'm like, what they, the fuck story is this? Scattered. What does this have but to do with? they scattered like cockroaches. And she went yeah. up a wall and probably onto the ceiling. And the other ones went and got in their coffins. In the other, And that's why so many of them could stay there. Because they had their coffins lined up next to each other, apparently. There's so yeah. many squatters in his house. <laughs> he doesn't even know who, how many there are. That was and, that was wild. So He's like... It's like like jesus going into the temple he's like i gotta whip <laughs> get out get, get out. out uh no that is i was i was legitimate i'm glad you're explaining this to me i'm legit <laughs> legitimately lost when she's talking I'm like why is johnny randomly barging in and running at this lady <laughs> screaming i i don't even know who why why she's at the house no she one has secretly living there for right. two weeks like trying to be another freeloader just just but anything. no one testified about her until today so i'm like okay i've heard about everybody living there but i don't know who this woman is and why she was suddenly living there i don't know when on the timeline this is suddenly johnny's bursting through doors at people i Look, i'd be lost. bursting through i would have thrown them all off the balcony oh, yeah. I would have thrown, are you kidding and, and, and on a more serious note I, i've had people in my, my life oh who we're not serious drug problems and yeah. it's true that these kind of leech people they 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 glom on and i Forever. have i have kicked people like that out of a friend's house before been like all get out everybody out party's over you're leaving and and these are people she didn't even know you know they, they just end up in your house yeah. somehow and now they've taken all your food and they've done all this stuff and you're you're like how did this even happen and so i, I feel for him because th yeah parasitic grifters uh, exactly. The, there's only one person in this entire thing where I feel like had proper appreciation for Johnny's it, it, it's Isaac Baruch. He comes across mm -hmm. as the only guy who's not a freeloader. Like, yeah. I mean, he's living there for free, obviously, but it's like Johnny is like, it's not like, well, you know, you're Amber's friend's boyfriend. So I guess you can live here. Yeah, no, it's, they're all I taking like, care of, they're all taking advantage of him. Whereas yeah. Isaac has been his buddy since they were in high school. Like they've known each other forever. You know darn well you would put your best friend up in a penthouse if you could. Yeah. Yeah. But it's her, like, and, her hey, weirdo live, friends. Right. Live down the hall. Do look, dude, you uh, you've always wanted to paint. Start fucking painting, man. Look yeah. at look at this. I go. On a screen, and suddenly fifty million dollars comes in. Yeah. Fucking paint. It. Who cares? You need yeah. groceries here. Have have five hundred dollars. I don't care. Go buy go buy the good wine. Here's a thousand. And please just hang out. Be with me. I'm I'm with this nest of vampires. It's really weird. Uh, and and I feel like <laughs> nest of <laughs> and like that's, I, what they are. <laughs> that's exactly what they are. And he You're it feels call like their next witness from Transylvania. <laughs> <laughs> no, 
No, these are like those trashy vampires from like the James Woods movie. The John Carpenter's vampires. Like, <laughs> or The Craft, uh, that old uh, 90s movie. I love The Craft. I, I All my friends were so excited. We're like, maybe Nev Campbell's going to be naked in this movie. And then she wasn't. Oh, God, it was the worst. I want someone uh, to Photoshop these bitches' faces on that poster of The Craft <laughs> for me. Can somebody in the chat take care of that and send it to Nick or send oh, it to me? I'm on Twitter, too. You can find me there. I'm at Megan Fox Writer. You can send me stuff, too. I want I want to see I want to see all those bitches' faces, including the pointy-eared one, on The Craft uh, poster. Just in case, also send it to at Megan Fox because it'll be funny when her... <laughs> When her social media manager wakes up in the morning and looks in the, the message and goes, what the fuck is this? <laughs> I often wonder how many times that happens to her. I once had I once had a girlfriend call me up and she goes, you're not going to believe this. But I was very mad at you today because I was in the grocery store line and I saw a magazine cover and it said, Megan Fox is pregnant. And the very first thing I thought was, I can't believe she didn't call me. Yeah. <laughs> she goes then i caught myself I'm like wait that's that oh, wrong one that one <laughs> <laughs> as if but it was totally normal to her that i would be on a magazine cover at the grocery store which is right. just bizarre i was like laura what is wrong with you why would i be on the cover of people so um so yeah today today was interesting because of how and and i think the difference in what you got out of today versus what I got out of today, what I'm getting now, which is so much better, is I think I'm, it's the risk of the jury, right? Like I'm sitting there listening to this and all I can think is like, I don't even remember why this person is on the stand. And then suddenly Johnny is bursting into his own apartment. <laughs> well, yelling, that was the day he came to his senses. That yeah. was the day he decided he'd had enough. He pulled his balls out of Amber's purse and decided right. I've had enough. And he said, get the fuck out of my house. Yeah. Thank and God. That that's when whenever, he was throwing clothes down the stairs and phones off the balcony. Like, this is your moment. I'm like, go, 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 get him out, get him out. This man, you, his only flaw, well, not yeah. only, but one of his biggest flaws, he's got plenty of flaws. One of his biggest flaws, he's too generous. And they mm -hmm. all say that. Every single one of those uh, freeloading yahoos said, he's so generous. He let me live here. And also, none of them could remember the day they were invited to live in a penthouse for free. Are yes. you freaking kidding me? Except Isaac, who had the yeah. only believable answer of yeah. any of them. And they're like, when did you move in? The next day. Are you kidding? Yeah. <laughs> Have you seen this place? It was amazing. It's like, yeah, that's that's how anybody else. And these other people are like, are you sure, Johnny? You sure you want me to move in? And come. That's the sign. That's the sign of someone who is clearly uh they're they're freeloaders they're used to living on couches and everybody's reluctantly taking them in they're like you sure you want to have me because the last six roommates this month haven't been so accepting but if you've never thrown somebody out of your house with some righteous profanity righteous righteous like, profanity when you like, do it you're he like, had every right yeah. to be screaming he had every oh, yeah. right to be screaming at that moment he, he, he literally had a nest of a coven of witches in his house, casting <laughs> magic circles by her own testimony, casting magic circles in his house. Oh, no. and she she acts all Hell like innocent no. and weird. The, the the that chick, I I don't have it pulled up. It was, but uh, I put it in the chat. Her name is um, Mars, right? Is yeah, that the one? Elizabeth Mars. Elizabeth Mars. Um, I think it's privated. She's a but... spiritual advisor of some kind. Oh, she's a sex spiritual advisor. Oh, uh, oh God. Of course yeah, she is. So of course she is. you it's know, so like you can imagine uh, when, when he goes into his own apartment and it just has that stink of like human sweat and like <laughs> patchouli and some fucking candles. And he's like, God, every time. And like, the, this is why this chick is there. I can imagine. So yeah, love, sex and relationships, desire, activator, sovereignty, initiator. A literal, that's, yeah, this chat got it. A literal succubus. Seriously. Yeah. Like that, that's what this, and that's the, that is the energy Amber has. And she, she even she, had the, with her with Maleficent cheek 
implants. She had her <laughs> maleficent cheeks put in where it literally looks like she has prosthetics on her face. Those are not real, by the way. They are not real. They are cheek implants. Yes. She had herself look like a Disney villain. She believes that she's some kind of demon, sex demon. That's what she thinks she is. Yeah. Um, uh, that's my opinion anyway. That's the energy I get coming from her. Then she surrounds herself with friends who are literally a coven of witches practicing sex magic. Yeah. And, and we should be what? Obviously he, vindicated in what we thought in the first place. And, and just to the chat, if it sounds cool to you, you're still 25 and that's great. Johnny Depp is 50 at the time. <laughs> and trust me, as 40, like a coven of like sex magic uh, weirdos from L.A. sounds so goddamn tiring. I can't even imagine. Like, I'm like 58 year old. I know. <laughs> yeah, right? it's like, he, he's got to come home and he's like, no, I'm, I'm really not interested in this anymore. Like, I'm done. I'm done with this. This was back when I filmed 21 Jump Street. And that was weird then. I know where this goes. He no, no way. Do you like, uh, he just wants to come home to his wife. And this is, this is kind of the interesting juxtaposition of Johnny Depp is he falls in love with this super interesting and well-read old soul Amber Heard, which gagged me. Oh uh, God, she totally times. set that up. She yeah. set that. I can, I can prove it. <laughs> I uh, know she did. Well, and then, um, so, so that, but that's all set up, but that's who he's, Present and she's so interesting. She knows all this thing, but you can hear it in everything that they say that is supposed to sound ludicrous. Is when he's like, he just wants to come home to a somewhat traditional household. Like he's like, I don't want you out getting naked on the street on screen for everybody. You don't have to work. I make plenty of money. Like we could just have our thing. It's us. Me, it's, it's Slim and Steve. We're we're a pair. We're this duo. She's like, no, I really need my career. And he's like, but why though? But your like, career is Magic Mike XXL. That's your yeah, career. Your career exactly. sucks. So, I mean, and his advice to her was all good advice. Like him saying to her, okay, you want to be taken seriously in Hollywood, so don't show your tits and ass. Um, period. Like that's, that's, that's the answer right. and take better parts and don't, and say no to magic Mike XXL, which I watched the other night because I had to see her. Cause I, I, I couldn't, I had to, I just had to see who, what is this acting? By the way, that is like the worst writing on earth. I could almost give oh. her some credit. I could almost give her and say, how could anyone possibly say these lines and it come out well? Uh, but also she is, and I've watched a couple of movies with her in it now including something called her smell mm. <laughs> the mm. Gwyneth Paltrow story um. <laughs> she, and it, she's very forgettable she isn't awful like you're not while you're watching her you're not like that's the worst acting I've ever seen it's more like yeah she's not Tori spelling I don't where it's like remember her you don't exactly. remember her she reads her lines and that's it. And also, by the way, in that movie, Her Smell, they cast a magic circle with a coven of women, a coven of witches. I swear to God. And I know she put this in there herself. <laughs> I know she did. I, it was her in that model. Uh, the one that she supposedly had a threesome with, with Elon Musk. That's the rumor. I don't know if there's any truth to that. But Cara Delevingne, she was in this movie, too. And they were doing a casting circle, uh, just like they did in Johnny's house. When he came in like Van Helsing, uh, uh, throwing holy water and and garlic at them. Uh, man, intimacy with Liz Mars uh, is close. The registration is closed, so I can't <laughs> I can't sign up she for an intimacy workshop. She charges five hundred and fifty five dollars for a ninety minute phone call uh, or six ninety minute phone calls with her. Now, why didn't she charge six hundred and sixty six dollars? You know she wanted to, but instead it was five hundred and fifty five. Like I didn't, I mean, that's, that's an advance. You usually have to pay by the minute for that action. Um, I know it's like her own personal <laughs> 900 number, except it's way more expensive. Ring. <laughs> and this it's not Liz even, Mars. it's not even one-on-one. -on -one. It's a group phone call. Oh man. Who eats the pizza afterwards? <laughs> Gross. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's, it's. Uh, it's terrible. I was going to register for her class. I thought that'd be funny. Wouldn't, oh man, that'd be so funny to live stream that. Oh my God. <laughs> that would be so great. 
<laughs> you have uh, to do it. Hey, you already got a bunch of I law can't... tube guys in the courtroom. It's, it's <laughs> you can do anything. You I... really can. You can make it any all of it happen. It's not. I can't register. I like. I'm clicking on it. it doesn't let me register it. It's registered closed. She shut everything down today. Mm. Um, her Instagram's privated. Everything got shut down. She got bombed by a whole bunch of comments and stuff. Um, but uh, God, yeah. No, I just want. I wanted to see. Uh, Five fifty is makes sense. Uh, for the price, I want, wanted to see how much it cost and like what what it entailed. It's like is this in person or whatever. Um, but very, very weird. These are weird people. And that's, that's one thing that is increasingly coming to me about Johnny Depp is like, this man was longing to get back to being in something, not his parents relationship, which is disaster, but just this idea of a normal home. And so he's, he's like trying to keep Amber happy. Why why did he leave his normal home then? You know, this is just that, that midlife crisis thing, I think that, and Amber being a sex magic succubus that she appears to be. Um, we, we are still mechanical beings. Us hit men. Him. <laughs> she, hit, she, she got to him right at that moment in time when he should have said no and gone yeah. back home. You know, but and, and this, is, this is one of those things. He thought he could ride the dragon. He saw the crazy hot matrix. He knew where she was on the scale. It's the no go zone. But there's that man, that type of man that high, he's got high sexual value. He can have any woman in the world he wants. He believes, he believed, I can ride that dragon. I can do it. But yeah. unfortunately, fellas, nobody can do it. Not even Johnny Depp. If Johnny Depp can't do it, don't try. Because it'll Megan, never work for you. I accept what you're saying. But her ass left a perfect imprint <laughs> I left on so the couch. Hard that he would not let anybody disturb. <laughs> and there is a rare time in a man's life when an ass leaves a couch, but stays on the couch forever. And this was his moment. This is what he, he's like. Everything I want can wait. <laughs> can wait. <laughs> so. He paid a very steep price for it. He paid a very steep price. He had an yeah. entire coven of freeloading yahoos living in his penthouses i mean taking them on vacation uh he wasn't in a marriage with her he was he was the he was the the horse pulling the cart yeah filled with all of her 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 entire crew that she that these people and the reason why and here's what i believe why she doesn't talk to any of these people anymore because the gravy train is derailed, honey. There's yeah. no more, no more money coming out of her. No more penthouses for them to squat in. They're not real friends. These are junkies, and junkies well, will glom on to anybody that can provide them with the uh, the latest, you know, LA pad to to crash at. It's the it's the worst combination because if Doctor Muffins is right, she's um. You almost made me spit my beer oh, out. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> She, <laughs> she's Muffins. she's borderline and histrionic and and or and even if you don't like accept those specific diagnoses but she's a cluster b personality it's pretty clear she's somewhere in that i narcissism. think dr muffins is right on yeah yeah i i think so too but but if she's not one of those she's narcissistic right like she's one of these things and so they don't make great relationships at a deep level they make surface level relationships and they uh like she explained they mimic and they please because they need to do this to fit in when you've got vampires who will suck everything out of you they will stick around these people who are absolutely toxic but they have everything that they want because that person has to give to them they don't have to reciprocate anything except presence and so they they hang around, they suck her dry. And then once, yeah, like you said, once that gravy train is gone, her insufferable personality becomes insufferable really quick when it doesn't come with a free bottle of wine every night. So, uh, and a place to sleep. So now they're like, eh, I mean, I don't know. You're kind of exhausting. <laughs> it's like, well, I wasn't exhausting for two years. I mean, this is the thing though. This is the lesson. This is the karma in it. This is the karma in all of it. I, I, you make better choices. When you have a good family and you have a good woman and you have 
your children at home. Do everything you possibly can to hang on to that because no ass, no matter how perfect and no matter what kind of imprint it leaves on your couch, that that ass is not worth this kind of karma that comes around to bite you. I mean, it just, every, it just every doesn't. Guy in the, every guy in the chat's like, well, we'll see. <laughs> <laughs> Because they're gonna try. Let point. me check it. Let, well, let, I, let, know, maybe this you, ass is though. How uh, long have you been married? Me? Oh, 17 and uh 17 years and 10 months. So I got you beat. I've been married for 21 years. Um yeah. to the first guy I ever married. <laughs> so first first marriage. Um, I feel like we've got I think we're for sure past that that hump. Um and I just can't imagine starting all over again. I, oh my I God. It'd be like, so a friend of mine works with, um, uh, very successful people who, uh, tend to be older men, not like, not like meteoric success, 20 year old actors, people who've built businesses and industries. Right. And, and so, um, you know, these guys are worth, 50 to 500 million dollars and they they're they're 55 to 60 years old and they they divorce their wife mm. or whatever and then they they're like dating 20 year olds right because they can because they have infinite money and uh and <laughs> you just you you go up to the first 20, 20 year old and you're like, do you want to get in my Ferrari? And she says, no, you, and you go to the next 20 year old and she says, yes. Like, that's just how, it, that's the process by which dating in the, in the multimillionaire stage goes. And so, um, and his advice to one of them, cause he met this, he met this girl that this guy is, is like getting married to. And he looks at, he says, you know, there's at least 22 hours of the day where you're not having sex with her, right? <laughs> like, it's like, it's like, you have to put up with that you have for to all the her. rest of it. You have to and listen to her, whatever generation she's, crazy generation she's from. You're not going to understand a single thing she says. Not going to understand a single thing that she's into. Yes. It, it's, it's uh, like, I, I can't stand, you know, trying to have like a, real conversation with um with a 20 year old most of the time because it's like we don't speak the same language anymore that's fine it's not a slight to the 20 year old it's just like we're in different places like i'm i'm thinking in the back of my mind about all the things i have to do to keep my kids alive every day and you're thinking about going to college or doing this and like starting a career and it's wildly different places in just a an even exchange conversation. Now in the proper context, of course, like uh, if I'm trying to hear their story or whatever, that's different, but just casual conversation, it gets exhausting very fast. Johnny Depp, I, I again, he got suckered in by this old soul weird thing. Oh, she's so well read on all these books. Like Johnny, she's been, she left her house at what? 17 and moved to LA. She hasn't actually read any books. No. In that fact, time. Okay. Nick, you're going to love this. So I had, I did, I did a video the other day. It's on my YouTube channel <clears throat> of a deep dive into her Instagram. And she spends an enormous amount of time trying to convince people that she's a very avid reader and not just any reader, but every book she shows you is like this thick, right? I actually wrote yeah. this. I wrote this one. This one's one of mine, but it's actually this thick. And, and it's by like, I don't know, these obscure Russian art uh, authors. And there's, there, she's always putting up just stuff that people don't read. You know, yeah. <laughs> like no one reads it. Oh, Stalin, all these books on Stalin. Uh, I'm just sure that she's not reading them. She's just taking pictures. She takes pictures of herself in old bookshops. She takes right. pictures of herself sitting on the bed, reading actual newspapers. Like no one actually does this anymore. <laughs> she has an actual newspaper spread out all over the bed. And she's drinking a cup of tea at the same time. She's supposedly reading this New York times. I, so I say in this video, I say, look, I don't know if this is true. Oh, she's posing with a book like this. This is so funny. She's on the set of Aquaman. Aquaman, as Johnny said. Yeah. She's posing with the book as she's getting her makeup put on. So she's literally holding this book like this while the makeup people are, and she, we're supposed to believe that she's reading this book as the makeup people are putting makeup on her face. Yeah. Come on. Come on. Yeah. It's yeah. like, bitch, you, you, at best you've got audible on. 
Yeah. Like <laughs> that's, that's but wait, then it gets even worse. So I say, well, I don't know if she's actually read these books, but I'm gonna guess that she hasn't. There's just something about her that I don't think she's that big of a reader, but she really wants you to know that she reads. Okay, so yeah. then I'm watching the behavior panel. I don't know if you've seen these guys, but they're body language you know my opinion court experts <laughs> yes but they also they also don't just do body language but some no, of them do behavior they're behavior analysts right which is very interesting to me because i like reading i like listening to stuff about psychopaths and serial killers sure. so i was watching their um one their part three on amber's body language and one of the guys says and i about dropped my phone because <laughs> this was after i'd done the video and i had this idea in my head and he goes See, I do this thing. It's like a party trick. I can tell you by just talking to you for like 10 minutes, what books you've read down to the last author you've read. And he goes, because I pay a lot of attention to the way people structure their sentences. And there's sure. something about the way people structure their sentences. And of course, I'm hooked immediately as he says this. I'm a writer. It's all I do is structure sentences all day long. So I, he he says, I do this at parties for, and people get really excited when I do it because I'm always right. He goes, mm -hmm. I can tell you <laughs> Amber Heard does not read books. <laughs> yeah. He goes, her <laughs> vocabulary and her sentence structure says to me that she's not reading any of those books. And I about died because I thought, well. She's I, certainly not reading classical Russian authors. I mean, there's no, no way. And when I mean, she first met Johnny in one of these interviews, they asked her, so what did you, what did you bond over? And she says, well, we read the same books and, we, and we're into the same poetry. And uh, we, we bonded over East of Eden, she says, by Steinbeck. And now, <laughs> as soon as she says that, I'm like, bullshit. The last yeah. Steinbeck novel I read was Grapes of Wrath. And it was because they made me. And it was a really shitty book. And I hated it. Uh, you know, in school, they make you. Now, I didn't read East of Eden, but I don't think I would like it. Anyway, she says to this interviewer, Johnny told me I had read East of Eden. We both loved this book, but he wanted to discuss it further. So he told me to read it again. Well, you know what that means? You she never read it. Read it. <laughs> so yeah. she had to go and read it while she was while they were talking about it so she could actually have a conversation about it. And she probably bought the Cliff's Notes because I'm not sure if she could get through East of Eden. I, I wouldn't. Uh, <laughs> not not today. And, and I'm a writing major, literature, creative writing major. Uh, you know, I, I don't want to read that ever. Um, for me, just so the chat is very clear. If you ever see a picture of me in like a book, like an old bookstore or whatever, like all these, all these books that all these aren't old, these are new, but it's because I like the way the book looks. Mm -hmm. I don't have time to read anymore. <laughs> like I can't, if if you put my last book, I got, I still haven't finished James O'Keefe's book and I feel like an absolute asshole for it, but I got on a plane and I opened the book and I woke up when we landed and it was like, cause I can't, it's like, Oh, I have two hours. I'm asleep immediately on the plane. Um, I don't have time to read anything and it, it sucks, but I, I buy books cause I like the craft of the book a lot of times. And I really like some old books. Like I have, I have like this, uh, old leather bound David Copperfield that I found in an estate sale. And it's, it's like little, it's, it's cool. It's like, I'm never going to read this book though. Um, so I, I think there are people who like the image of books and that's okay, but be honest about it for sure. Um, uh, I, I uh, no, she, she, well, she, she strikes just, me. She's an illusion. What, yeah. What she's, she's a chameleon. She's setting what she sells is an illusion. It's not real. And, and I think Johnny said that in some of his uh, tapes, in one of the tapes, he said, you were, you were never real. You were never real. You weren't, I didn't fall in love with you. I fell in love with, with something, someone that wasn't there, who wasn't there. Mm -hmm. um, that's absolutely spot on because she, she became what she knew he would want. And I do believe she researched him. I do not believe for one second that she knew nothing about him. She read everything she could. She even found out what kind of blues bands that he liked. Uh, and and made sure that she knew some of those that music. I'm yeah. sure. Um, well, because how I, does again, somebody who doesn't know blues then say she or who who knows this blues so well that I don't know who Carly Simon is? Yeah, yeah. And and well, it it goes into that again. Back to the doctor's diagnosis. She has to chameleon 
She has to mimic, imitate, and grab onto something. And those people are magnetic until you get close to them, and then they're horrifying. Um, you see past the veneer, and and the faking no longer works. So, uh, and uh, I, <clears throat> I will say I can do that personally. I'm I'm very good at getting into random conversations at surface levels with bits of knowledge that I picked up. It helps when you're in social situations where you don't know anybody and you have to mingle in this like party or uh, for me, it's like at a convention um, I get invited to and I can have very nice service level conversations that can engage. And I tend to learn something from them. The other person probably doesn't because I'm engaging with some little like tidbit and then they're engaging with their actual hobby. And I appreciate that, but we don't have to move past that conversation. We're probably not talking in depth on this thing. Uh, you know, in an hour, I, I may never see that person again. So I, I have that as well. It's, it's either a disability or a skill. I don't know. Um, but I, I can do that, but, uh, I try not to be fake about anything. Um, I try to learn from other people and I have no reason to get in anybody's pockets. So, <laughs> so as long as uh, I think, I think I'm okay there, but, but no, it's it in when you, when you do that sort of consciously, you know, that if I were to try and pretend hard for like a long time that it would fall apart very quickly. That's the point I want to get to it, it, in that if, if someone is doing that because that's their personality disorder um, and, and what's behind there is like a manipulative monster. It can be really a pain if someone gets sucked in, it's like a vortex, like charybdis or whatever. Cause I did it's read sad. that. Book. It's like, it's kind of sad. I mean, I feel, I mean, obviously Amber's a person and she's got her own demons to deal with. And she is certainly, doesn't know who she is, I don't think. And this, um, I don't think she ever intended to be this infamous. I know she really wanted to be very famous. And I guess in, in one way, she's gotten her wish. I do believe that there's a way for her to be um, rehabilitated here. But she has to give up right now. She needs to go settle. She needs to come out and say, I have a drinking and drug problem. I also have some mental health issues I need to work on and I'm going to check myself into a mental health facility or a drug rehab and I'm sorry. And and people would forgive her because people love a comeback story but but yeah. you have to actually be you have to actually be sorry and you have to actually own up to it. And I I don't see that happening. I actually really wish that for her uh, because like Isaac said, he's such a sweet man. Like I want her to heal, I want him to heal, I want everybody here to get better. Uh, but there's no way she's going to get better unless she can own up to what she did. She she has to own up to this. This this is this is unbelievable. Oh yeah, uh, it's it's very very bad. Um, with that, with the unbelievableness, let's uh let me get some of the super chats from this stream. I do have the super chats from earlier today. We'll get those towards the end of the show. Uh, I want to use my time with Megan very, very carefully and respectfully. Um, but uh, we we do have some super chats about the show today that I want to talk about here. Ryan, I love listening to your super chats. Go for it. <laughs> Ryan, the editor, says, has got a 1,500-acre fire southwest of my city. Smaller town order to evacuate and containment was 10% last I heard. Please give those, fi uh, those fighting it a prayer. It's very dangerous and grueling work. They need it right now. And, of course... Prayers to all firefighters, but especially those today who are engaged in fighting a, an active blaze. Uh, hopefully, they'll be they'll be all safe and get that thing contained so that uh, so that the people in the path of the fire are safe as well. Low pro, Elaine and Amber Heard apparently put on a show of acting like they were cool this morning at court, but it could be performative. Oh, it, that hug was the most performative bullshit I've ever seen. Uh, <laughs> I missed Amber, it. I missed Amber, it. Amber's not a good actor. And she goes, it was like the mo it was like, come on, hold on. We may need to J J Jamie, pull the tape. Hold on. I'm Jamie. Uh, <laughs> I'm Jamie. I have the same problem. I need a, I need a producer. I don't yeah. have one. Let me see if I can find. I'm eligible for super. I've had super thanks forever. God, what a stupid thing. I, it's. Uh, Sorry. 
YouTube, I open up YouTube and it says, you're eligible for super thanks. I'm like, I fucking know. I've, I was in the beta program for super thanks. Um, stupid thing. Sorry. Uh, let me see, Johnny. Yeah. Somebody in the chat asked if I had a, a YouTube channel. I do. Um, yes, it's in the description, guys. Click. It's on always name. in the description. You know, Nick always says that. <laughs> yes. Uh, so today was day 18? eighteen. Yeah, today was day eighteen. Let's see. I just I'm gonna pull up the initial one. Uh, oh, this is the one I watched from. No, wait, that's the second one from. Oh wait, no, that's the whole Sky News one. Okay, here we go. Uh, we don't even need audio on this, really, but I just want to get to the point where Amber Heard walks in the courtroom because it is. Okay, so here, here we are. Over here's Elaine. Amber's not there yet. Oh, let me oh, look. So Elaine's waiting. This. Yeah, she's. Look at her. She's waiting for Amber to show up because she knows she has, this is the, this is the, her role. This is the moment of her, her life. She's not sitting down and she's looking towards the door. And look, I'm a behavior panel too. <laughs> you turned into the behavior panel. I'm chameleon my way into there. Here we go. Here we go. Watch the camera. Oh, oh did it, is it buffering? What happened? No, no, no. I was, I was fast forwarding too oh, far. Okay. Here, here it comes. So here she comes. Look at this. No genuine oh, smile. Good morning. Until she gets right there. Here we go. Hi. Hi. Elaine. Oh, yes. Oh, oh, Lord. Thank you. I love you, girl. Yeah. It was, that's fake as shit. They know it. The, this, oh, look, everything's fine. Here's what she actually said I fucking hate you. <laughs> <laughs> I think that there's a real chance that Amber's going to sue these attorneys if she, if she loses. Oh, on uh, almost no question, she'll sue him. Um, she's uh, lots of people sue their attorneys when they lose. Um, she is, uh, she is also like the type of person who we've seen cannot be at fault for anything. So she will hold them accountable. It is um, it, 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 it's her inability to admit any kind of actual fault in herself when saint amber takes the stand i i'm just like everybody buy a candle put amber's picture on it and let's pray to it every day because saint amber is going to save us she is she she should be canonized apparently according to her testimony yeah the pope should be canonizing amber heard she's never committed a sin when she does drugs it's a cuddle puddle when johnny does drugs he's a monster when she drinks wine you know, she has no reaction. She's fine. She's happy. She's dancing, apparently, according to her sister. Oh, I got to ask you about her sister, too. Oh, well, uh, we'll get there. Oh, you're, um, you've got super chest. Sorry. I got, well, I got to finish this one. I, I only read the first half of it. Oh. <laughs> but real quick, like, with, with in the context of the, like, vile sex demon thing, Cuddle Puddle takes on a different meaning. And I think Nick Doesn't Fuentes it? may be coming with a black light. So, um, <laughs> Okay, so, uh, so yes, yeah, so he says, but it could be performative, right? This is back to low pro. My pet theory is that Amber Heard is such a cunt that if she loses, Elaine is going to laugh to her cats about it. <laughs> <laughs> yes, I think so. Uh, Tony K, the politics played in Buffalo, New York is sad because of the shooting over last weekend. I used to live in Buffalo, now in Florida. On a lighter note, I acquired older bottles of Highland Park 12 and 15 at local liquor store. Nice. Nice. Very good. Highland Park's a good whiskey. Matthew Spriggs, did you see Tim Cast tonight? No. <laughs> <laughs> Guys, I, I, uh, the only thing I watched today were clips people sent me of Ethan Ralph having an aneurysm uh, over yesterday. That's that's it. And so we're talking like 30 seconds at a time as I'm going to my car or getting out of my car or walking to my bed. That That's it. Um, but no, I did not see Tim Cast tonight. Guest Libby Emmons wrote, wore a low cut top dress uh, and the chat was all milk jokes for all two hours. No shortage of baby formula here and cross your arms. <laughs> We're among the most common thirsty chat. Who's Libby Emmons? I've never even heard of this person. Me either. Okay, so here's Libby Emmons. I mean, uh, oh, from the post millennial. Okay, she's not wearing low cut uh, anything in the. 
Oh, there's a picture of her where I see why the low cut thing matters. Okay, got it. Uh, yeah, I can see that. I can see the the chat going a little bit nuts on that one. That's pretty funny. Um, <laughs> the internet is full of insufferable uh, chat rooms, and that's why I absolutely adore it. Uh, okay, next. Um, X name 530. We have to ask the question, so I might as well get it in early. Megan, balls or no balls? They keep asking me this. I don't know what this means, and I feel like I can't. I, I'm going to lose either way. No, there's there's a correct answer, but um, I don't know I it. Mean, I'm not in on the joke. I'm going to. I hate gonna, going to say the wrong thing. Like I hate bringing normal people into this question, but we can if we want, or we can we can move on. It's it's up to you. No, I, I'm willing to play. So I, I have to okay. pick one. I have to pick well, one. Well, I'll let, I'll give you the context. I'm not okay. going to make you pick blind. <laughs> that would be. That'd be no, horrible. Going into it blind is not yeah. fun. That's not fair. <laughs> then I'll just be branded forever with as the girl who answered the wrong thing. You wake up in a sweaty Japanese room with your eyes blindfolded and they just say balls or no balls. The one thing you do know is that your night is about to get terrible. Um, no. So the the trick is, sorry, the, the, the question is in res, res, related to something called futanari. Okay. <laughs> which is a Japanese, uh, you're familiar with anime, uh, right? Uh, somewhat. Like, you know it exists. I know it exists. I've seen right. some of it, and I've actually done some research on some really dark shit in it. Uh, so I, I'm, I'm, I'm a, I'm, I'm. Were you doing a story familiar. on Kurt Eichenwald? <laughs> <laughs> I do know that one. I know that one. I know okay. that one. Uh, so yeah. in. In an anime that Kurt Eichenwald would watch and tell his children about later, um, you will have something called a futanari, and that is that is a female character who is biologically female, but uh, when when necessary, will grow a massive phallus. And so then, the question is: On your futanari, uh -huh. should there be balls or no balls? Oh my god. I did look who cares <laughs> a lot of people is, a right, shocking well, amount of people care I, I, I don't guess, know why I'm, I'm going with balls who doesn't want Thank balls you. exactly I guess I mean no you you're right you don't big have to, you... brass balls <laughs> that's my answer okay Alec Baldwin <laughs> <laughs> Uh, weird the chat but, weird weird <laughs> like you know what was weird the question okay that was what was weird to the chat you're weird you're weird <laughs> no uh weird team balls <laughs> <laughs> okay sorry that's you know forever you're tainted by this and i know i, I know i wish it weren't so i know uh, i'm still deciding on the unbreaded though i gotta tell you <laughs> it's, it's up in the air it's up in the air <laughs> It's it, up to it you. I don't. Happen. I don't force anybody to do that. I know exactly. It might happen. How it, ridiculous that is. It, 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 I can't believe you do that every day. To tell you <laughs> the, I, I really can't. I hear you do it, and I'm like, God, he has balls. This one. I mean, just <laughs> this. Talk about brass balls. It's right here. Uh, you know what it takes that, to read unbreaded. It takes <laughs> brass balls, gentlemen. <laughs> Go and do if, likewise. If my editor hears me reading unbreaded, I may not have a job tomorrow. I just, yeah, I you know. might. I I advise people against it most of the time, <laughs> unless you're terminally online. I I advise people against it. Oh no. Um, Mary Diaz says, with the Amber Heard and Johnny Depp bathroom story, they need to ask which way the door swings. Uh, well, it's going to swing whichever way is convenient for whoever is answering at this point. It's it's a long time ago. Um, but bathroom doors almost universally swing inward. Yeah. Right. Like yes. it's a bathroom door. They swing into the bathroom. I have you never might, been in a bathroom where the door came the other way. It would only be in, you know, uh, like hell, even on airplanes, the door goes in. I think, you know, the door, it, 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 yeah, in. It, well, it, it, it folds. slides. Yeah. It folds and slides sideways. You might have like a, an RV situation where, where there's just a toilet in there and no room. So it has to open out or slide or whatever. But generally speaking, bathroom door is going to swing, swing in. I'm going to guess on the East Columbia building in million and a half dollar penthouse apartments, that they have probably a few extra square feet in the bathroom and they probably swing in. So if Johnny's trying to close the door, 
uh, and it and it cuts Amber Heard's toe or whatever. She's trying to force her way in to the door. I'm and, still and, on the timeline. It, I thought the door scenario was in Australia. Well, who knows at this point? <laughs> Seriously, it's just, where. Give me my drink. I've got two drinks going at the same time. I'm I'm just switching. Well, you got some whiskey. I do. Uh, I'm. This is High Point. Have you ever tried High Point? High Point whiskey. Why uh -huh. is it blurred out on your? Oh no, it's just it's, it's the my glass that you screen. have. It's my oh, it's my glass. Yeah, it's my glass. Your glass has here. little little square facets. I looked at it and I was like, "What is this? A Japanese vagina? Like this thing is <laughs> blurred out. I can't see it at it's all." The glass. The glass thought, is kind of odd. <laughs> I thought you had some cool pixel. How the fuck is she doing that in real time? I was amazed. You're just drunk. That's no, <laughs> no. It was your thumb is pixelated. Okay. Uh, <laughs> look at the screen. You can yeah, see it. <laughs> yeah, it's funny. It does look weird. I never noticed that. No, this is High Point Double Rye. I think it's really good. It's from Utah. It's a distillery in okay. Utah. I uh, I will try and find that because I've never had it. And oh, I how love... have you never had High Point? Okay, it's never my even seen favorite High Point. whiskey. Campfire is really good. Double Rye is really good. Um, oh, yeah, you'll like it. And then I've got a beer here, too. I've got a Spotted Cow from Wisconsin. I can't do beer. I don't. I, I can do mead. I can't do beer. I think it's the hops. I just don't like the taste of hops at all. I'm so uh, it's sorry. Probably, well, it's probably because I grew up in the 80s. So, God, you're in, right. The chat is killing me. It's High West, not High Point. You know oh, what? Okay, I'm point? like, oh, I've you know had what? High West whiskey. Okay, you know why I said High, high Point's point? a gun. Do you know why I said High Point? <laughs> why this is, is that? funny because the company that owns High West, their corporate office is called High Point. Okay. So, <laughs> and I get the two, and that one's here. It's here by me. I'm in New York. Um, I've I've got an empty bottle of High that's West. That's funny. It is High West. So. Yes, it's High West. Thank yeah. you. Yeah, High West is good. Um, but no, I grew up in the eighties and in the eighties, when you grow up, you finish your dad's beer all the time. Like that's just, that's just how it was. <laughs> it's weird for people now, but like, you know, your, your dad just here, have a sip. It's like, yeah, okay. And then, and then you, and then, and then go grab me another one or go like, I learned how to tap a keg a lot, really young because my dad would have poker nights. <laughs> so I'd go be a little beer getter running around, hitting all these guys beer. Like that was. Uh, and, and you take sips of beer and it's, I, to me now it's just, it was disgusting then, but it was cool. Uh, now I'm like, God, I, I hate hops. I don't like the taste of it. I don't like it at all. So I can't do it. Uh, hats off to people who can, um, in the seventies, you see <gasps> grandpa. somebody beer. did it. They made the craft poster for me. This oh, I had no doubt that would happen. Hilarious. I owe till it. Oh my God. I'm dying. I'm dying. This is so funny. I'm sending this to you so you can pull it up. I'm giving, I'm putting it in your Twitter DMs. This is hilarious. Uh, oh my gosh. Or I could put it in the chat. Maybe that's easier. Should I put it in the private chat? I, you could do it either way. I've got one. It might be this one. Um, oh my gosh. Thank you so much, chat. That is hysterical. Or is it, is it this one? Uh, or, or this is different. Is this it? Wait, I'm looking, hold on. I, I clicked off. No, no, that's perfect too, but that's not the one I just sent you. That's really Yeah. Cause weird. IO till it's not on this one. So no IO's on the other one. I put it in the private chat. It's the second link in the private chat. Okay. Here we go. Uh, IO's in the, in this one, IO's got uh, her head on the other one. <laughs> her head. Yes. Uh, here we go. <laughs> <laughs> this is good oh it's perfect this is perfect okay. perfect so uh yeah that's uh oh that's good stuff the witches <laughs> of east columbia oh what a mess um god these people is that okay this doesn't look like a photoshop this looks like someone made this I want to bring this back up. This is not a Photoshop of like the craft. It's uh, so good thing. Yeah. Someone made this fresh. Oh, it's this, so good. Because this is a, I think a photo of them or like some of these are a photo of them. Maybe, maybe not. Maybe I might be wrong on this one. I don't know, but it's amazing. It's That's perfect. A really good shop. If whoever did that, you're a hero. I wish I had talents. Um, 
Okay, so uh, back to Mary Diaz's post. If it swings into the bathroom, it's hard to believe she was the one in the bathroom. If he closed on her toe and she hit him with the door. Yeah, I, I mean, her kicking the door open and hitting him in the head with it only happens if it swings in and he's inside. Unless, I guess unless you're saying it swings outward and he's outside. But uh, but no, I mean, the, you know what? This We can solve this. <laughs> We have the oh. internet <laughs> building penthouse blueprint. Oh yeah, I bet it. <laughs> I, bet. I know. I've seen it. They they introduced it at trial, so I know it's here. Here we go. Oh, I got goodness. it. We can see. Let's see. This is an amazing timeline. Every bathroom door swings inside. I'll show you. <laughs> well, that took twenty seconds. <laughs> so here's here's what you got. Uh, penthouse. I don't know which penthouse it's in. Penthouse five bathroom door swings inward here it is this this indicates an inward swinging door penthouse four inward swinging door penthouse three inward swinging door um i, I know it sounds like i'm saying n-word swinging door but i'm saying inward um here you go same thing here all of these bathrooms the door swings in so um yeah so johnny that here here it is again over here because this is a building that is modern and and has plenty of space uh you're gonna have you're gonna have bathrooms that swing in. So, so there you go. There you go. This is an amazing time, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> so, it what is. Mean? What a timeline. What a time to be alive. And like, you're wondering, do the, do the doors swing in, in or out? Guess what? We can find the blueprints in like under 20 seconds. <laughs> it's there the is, first... There's nothing you cannot find online. Yeah. East Columbia building penthouse blueprint on Google. And the first result is from the independent. Uh, court shown plans of Johnny Depp and Amber Heard's elaborate five home uh, penthouse or whatever. There it was. Oh my God. So. My Twitter notifications are lit up with hashtag team balls. <laughs> <laughs> oh, excellent chat. And it begins. And it begins. The you squids. Know? Uh, <laughs> The Squid says, man, that Transformers chick aged really well, considering Amber Heard and Demi Lovato exist and already look like dumpster fire. <laughs> That's one of the uh, nicer Megan Fox jokes. Thank you. I appreciate that. <laughs> that the other ones are kind of mean, but uh, I, I'm trying not to look. I've had to turn the chat off a few times. Oh, yeah. Turn. They're miscreants. <laughs> Don't don't pay attention. To oh, them. I'm used to it. I've heard I've heard all of them. Can you imagine on my YouTube channel, every single time anything goes up with a title that says Megan Fox this or Megan Fox that, every single time I shit you not, this is not the Megan Fox I was looking for. <laughs> they, every time. Let chat. Uh, let me tell you, like you think Amber Heard is a weird a sex vampire demon thing. I just read any article. That quotes Machine Gun Kelly and Megan Fox, and all you want to do is you want to you get you get contact self harm from these people. Like it's like if you walk into a room where Megan Fox and Machine Gun Kelly were an hour before, you pull out a razor and start cutting your wrist. You're like, oh god, I just need to feel again. It is the most melodramatic Twilight bullshit I've ever. And I'm like, it's bad. It's really oh. bad. And and every time she's in the news and every time she's trending, like shit gets really weird for me. People send me uh, private messages. Yeah. People because they, you know, they mix me up with her. Um, there are other there are about there are hundreds of thousands of Megan Foxes, by the way. That's a good Irish name. I'm from Chicago and there's about 100,000 of us just in Chicago. So this is not an unusual. Well, 100,000 minus five every weekend. <laughs> yeah, on. Four Are Chicago yes. murder jokes okay? Yes. <laughs> Your editor? Uh, yes. Oh, yeah. We make them all the time. Are you kidding? Have you read PJ Media? Do you know we make those kinds of jokes all the time? Uh, they, there's no problem with that. In fact, the number one uh, trending article on the site right now is Portland is dead. <laughs> <laughs> and it's like by Kevin Downey Jr., who is a really funny bastard, by the way. So if you ever want to have him on, he's hilarious. Uh, he is funny, uh, funny dude. But yeah, no, we make a lot of jokes over there. They're, they're actually, it's the greatest place to work because they do not care. Uh, they defend me all the time. They defend jokes. They defend everything. I can't yes. get canceled over there. Like my, my, the, the Salem like guy, heaven. we work for Salem Media and um, uh, one of our big bosses He's so funny. I will tag him on Twitter with people trying to cancel me. And I'll just be like, here, here's my boss. Talk to him. 
<laughs> and he will just ream them. And he is so much worse than me on Twitter. He's so much spicier than me. It's always good when your boss is spicier than you on Twitter. Yes. Oh, right? my gosh. Well, if they ever want to syndicate a show, let me know. <laughs> God, I, I, I can know. get their email inboxes filled. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> well, you would have the FCC to deal with then. You don't want to do that. Stay on YouTube. <laughs> Stay on YouTube. This is where it's at. Uh, here we go. Timothy Reaper says questions for your guest. How do you feel about your performance in the Transformer movies? Uh, Never seen it. Never seen it. Don't. Don't. Well, watch the, you know, the original, the animated one from the 80s. Oh, was... that I've seen. Yeah. The animated ones, of course. I grew up with that. Uh, but no, the one with the other, that other girl yeah. that I don't like to talk about, her, the blood drinker, I don't, I don't watch that shit. I, I like Megan Fox. Like, to be fair, I like her just fine. Uh, and I'm not talking like in a she looks like a, a monster now. I think she alert. looks like an alien with all the plastic surgery she had. She was like super hot back when Transformers came out. No doubt. She was she was super hot. And she looks you know like, like an alien now. She's got the Amber Heard cheekbone implants. She's got all kinds of weird shit now. She's got her chin like something's wrong with her chin. Her face is bigger now. It's bizarre. She just looks like an alien. I liked her a lot in This Is 40. I don't know if you've ever seen. Oh, that, yeah, yeah, yeah. That was that, good. Yeah, with Paul Rudd and the the redhead girl who's uh, I really like her. I, I can't remember her name and and Megan Fox and th I th I thought that was just that was like good. She's like the hot twenty seven year old and, <laughs> and, the, okay, and the forty the, year old. Jack just, like, keeps asking. I have normal looking thumbs. I do okay. not have toe thumbs. They're just just normal. See in comparison to my hand, just normal thumbs. Okay. She does have weird looking thumbs though. I, it's true. They I've do never look looked like at her thumbs. They look like toes. They look like okay, toes. I'll, I'll find a picture of her thumbs. It's oh, weird. yeah. They're all over over uh, the internet. You can find it in under 20 seconds right now. Megan Fox's thumbs. The the internet <laughs> fetish is is beyond me. Um, who's your favorite chaos god? That's like a D, that's like a 40k question. Just pick uh just pick corn because it's right. Corn. Um, corn. <laughs> yeah, thank you. Perfect. Blood for the blood god. Uh does pineapple belong on pizza? Absolutely not. Thank you. God. I'm from oh. Chicago. How could you ask me that question? You just heard where I'm from. Well, so you're from Chicago, so you know that pineapple doesn't belong on pizza, and the only thing you put on a hot dog is ketchup. Oh, hell um, no. We just had Chicago hot dogs last night. You're going to get me going now. Nobody our, puts, only psychos put ketchup <laughs> on hot dogs. Jeez. That's true. They should, like, uh, sane and refined people put ketchup and mayo on hot dogs. Do you know what they put on hot dogs in Rochester? It, like New York? Uh huh. Do you know what they no. put on hot dogs here? It Homeless should, people. It should be a capital crime. You should go straight to the chair for what they put on hot dogs here. Get ready for it? it. Macaroni salad topped with beanless chili. Have you ever heard of anything worse? Like I could see, I guess the bean. I don't like chili dogs, but I could at least see the beanless chili going on. But macaroni salad like why yeah, yeah, would like that be in there macaroni mayonnaise salad on top of a hot dog with beanless chili they also had their their claim to fame here in rochester is the worst place on earth for, for for food that's what should be up on the billboard don't eat here you'll never come back they have a <laughs> their signature dish is called the garbage plate it literally okay. is called the garbage plate it's home fries on the bottom all right a couple of hot dogs a couple of hamburger patties I'm listening. <laughs> <laughs> Macaroni salad. Oh, why? Mustard. Oh. And then they top it with that beanless chili. And I am not making this up. And then sometimes they put like fries on top. It is so weird. And they say you have, well, it's great when you're really, really drunk. But I'm like, wait a minute. I, if, if, if I can't eat something unless I'm really, really drunk, I'm sure I don't want to eat it. <laughs> Well, you've just convinced me to never, ever go into a Rochester bathroom. That's what you convinced me of. <laughs> Don't. Um, okay. Uh, almost finished with this one. Still from Timothy Reaper. Are traps gay? Yes. Correct. Is Shia LaBeouf <laughs> really a cannibal? Oh, I've never heard this one, but probably. I think so. I've Stalky <laughs> Pixel <laughs> says, looks, looks like I'll be stalking my second Megan Fox. Oh, no. Uh, <laughs> no, I don't want to pick up any new stalkers. No, I don't. <laughs> J JD says, hey, Nick, can I get a toast for my beautiful wife? 
We just found out she was pregnant after a year and a half of trying and not being sure whatever happened. I've been there, brother. So happy and just praying for continued health for both to your wife and to you and to the to the little life growing inside of her. It is, despite what some weird panelists may say, certainly a life and will become a baby. May the may it grow healthy and may mom be safe throughout the entire process. Cheers to you, buddy. Cheers. Yeah, early on in my marriage, we had three miscarriages. And then um, I think it was a year and a half of where we just could not, we we could not conceive again for whatever reason. No explanations, nothing. And and when we finally had that first child and it, you know, got to term, it was like, ugh, it was a slog. Uh, I felt like I took a hill in Vietnam, um, but it was, uh, it was, it was really great. So I I'm with you, man. I know. And then they just kept coming. And that was like, what the hell is happening now? Tarkina Meyer, average white guy was a total beta. When they talked, when they walked in, he says, you could tell that something bad happened. And Rocky says, go back home and wait. A man would not put his wife in danger. Uh, that guy, but see, he had that, that guy had the phantom tough guy act that that's what turned me off to that guy forever. He's like, Johnny was there. I would, we would have a different deposition right now. It's like, what? You, you're you're going to kick Johnny Depp's ass? Like, <laughs> you're not actually just going to go, not cool, bro. Not cool. Like, that's what you're going to do because that's what basically every normal person is going to end up doing. Stop fronting like you're a tough guy online. Uh, well, yeah, there's two bodyguards there. Otherwise. <laughs> Otherwise. <laughs> Otherwise. Other oh, I totally would have. Yeah. Straight Otherwise, away. you you would have gotten your ass kicked by a drunk Johnny Depp, and it would have been funnier. Um, okay. Uh, Ali Yusuf says, based on this succubus hunt talk, I suddenly want Depp to be cast as Geralt. Well, at least his <laughs> arms would be the right length. Um, Faye T Henry Cavill has short arms. Now that you've said that, I'm never going to be able to unsee it. Damn yes. it. Faye T says, maybe she was scared because she got caught. Lol. Yeah. I mean, that's that's why she was scared. Absolutely. <laughs> Nobody knew she was there. She was hiding out. In, did you hear what she said? I went and hid. She was probably like, for real, sleeping in one of those um, cabinets. <laughs> like, she, yeah. just so no one would find her. Oh. People want the toe thumb. They want to see Megan Fox's toe thumbs. Those are some short ass thumbs. Aren't they weird? Right. When people kept asking me, do I have toe thumbs? Like I was, I didn't know what it meant. And I had to ask someone like, why do you keep asking me if my thumbs look like toes? Like whose thumbs look like toes? And then sure enough, I looked it up and I was like, wow, I've never yeah. seen anything like that. Okay. I, I mean, I guess if you have a foot fetish, it's pretty hot. So here you go. Here's her. Look at how short that thing is. And fat and fat compared to her other fingers. Look how fat it is. Yeah. And it's just that's a, a really large, strange looking thumb. It looks photoshopped. I know. There are better pictures where you can see it up close and it really is bizarre. You know what it is? It's like it's like a dad and a mom, and they're like almost you know, like they're they're 18 year old and they're they're 14 year old and then they're six year old, right? Like that's it's like, well, we had this one a little late. That's what happened. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe her thumbs were on puberty blockers. Yeah. <laughs> I can't wait till we have just a, a bunch of short <laughs> trannies running around. <laughs> like, well, I blocked my puberty and then I became a man. Like, okay. The other day, I'm doing research for an article <laughs> and I go to click on this leaked Zoom video of these teachers who are teaching other teachers how to groom kids in school. And it's what I think is a guy, right? And he yeah. starts to talk. And it's this munchkin voice from The Wizard of Oz. And I thought... Oh, someone sped this up because this couldn't possibly be real. And then the other people around this person were talking normally. And I was like, wait a minute. That's literally her voice now. She sounds like one of those munchkins from, from The Wizard of Oz. And it's just, oh, M, G. Can you, like, I want Stay a longitudinal. blocking drugs, kids. I want a longitudinal study in like 30 years when I'm really like when I'm when I'm ready to, to turn in for, for life. And 
And uh, and I want to just look on it and laugh and find that the average height of trans people is like nine inches shorter than the average height of the general population. And I'm sorry, it's but like, I've never heard of anything worse than a micro penis. Uh, uh, why why are you choosing where, that? Oh yeah. Oh okay. So the, puberty blockers. Like, where did that come from? Okay. Yeah. No, that makes more sense. Yeah. No, that would. It, it, They're I, all I gonna get puberty. They're all gonna get. If you put kids on puberty blockers and they don't go through puberty, their genitals don't develop, and yeah. so you don't. You get a micro penis. And that's yep, and fine. definitely no balls, right? I mean, they just cut those off. <laughs> they just stay inside. And I'm team balls. We know this. <laughs> Red Mage 13. <laughs> this this stream might get in trouble. Red Mage 13. Read a short article today that supposedly Robert Downey Jr. looking to cast Johnny Depp in his next Sherlock Holmes movie um, would be cool to see. And coming from RDJ, no less, since he stood up for people like Chris Pratt, if it's true. Uh, RDJ is apparently like, one of Johnny Depp's best friends or something is what I read. So they're, they're like homies or whatever. So that would make sense. They came up around the same time. Um, Robert Downey's, you know, drug problem just became more of a problem for him than, than Johnny Depp's was allowed to be or whatever. Uh, but yeah, so I've heard the I've heard similar stuff and I think maybe that we can discuss this a little bit. Have you seen, a shift in perception in the media. I mean, we talked about headlines, but have you seen like an, an actual shift in media coverage on this from before the case to now, uh, based on how the case is evolving? Strangely, CNN and the big networks. Uh, so not, not the New York times, but the big television networks are kind of all on. They're, they're more neutral and leaning mm -hmm. Johnny. It seems yeah, like Fox. I, see. I noticed that Fox News, uh, which it, Fox, I mean, Fox could go either way because they're still corporate media. I mean, uh, they really are. Fox News, CNN, uh, and there was one other. Oh, NBC. NBC has been very neutral. Their articles have been very factual. I think they're very afraid of lawsuits. CNN, mm -hmm. on the other hand, has actually had a couple of positive headlines for Johnny. Now, when David Shane took over the PR. There was a very marked increase in positive headlines for Amber Heard, and they were all around the same uh, same thing. So, for instance, I caught them doing it on the same I, day. Rolling I got to call you out. I got to call you. I noticed you left out David Shane's middle name. What's his middle name? I don't know. Grab his... ass. <laughs> David Grab ass Shane. <laughs> you said it. I didn't. You must not have known his middle name. I, I so, didn't. Yeah. I no. That's I this didn't. is a fact. This is a true fact. One hundred percent. David Grabass Shane. It's really. It's it's an unfortunate, obscure I know Irish what you're doing. middle name, but it's David Grabass. Shane. I know what you're doing, and as an attorney, I, I it's, since you're an attorney, I respect it so much. I know what you're doing. And it's so good. It's so good. It's so good. Because, you know, this is why I'm team balls, by the way, because you just got to go for it. You got to go for it every time. Uh, Dave, uh, David Shane, never seen an ass he hasn't grabbed. He's <laughs> <laughs> walking around just grabbing asses left and right. Oh, oh, I caught variety. So this is what I think, David Shane. Can I share my screen or will it screw up the cameras? No, no, no. That was that was a me problem, and I've got it fixed. So. Do you? Because mine is yep. still doing that on StreamYard, and I don't know what to do about it. So maybe you can tell me later afterwards how to fix what it. What graphics card do you have? Oh, I have no clue. I don't know about that shit. How I'm... new is your How new is your computer? I bought it in November, so it's not that. It's a MacBook Pro. Oh no, that it's completely separate issue. I have no idea. Oh, <laughs> great. All right, all right. So I can share my uh, screen. Yeah. Okay. Here's what I caught the. Um, the media doing. Uh, I wrote this on May 10th. Okay. So this was right after David Shane took over the PR for Amber Heard. We had, we got two articles on the same day within minutes of each other. Variety posted theirs called TikTok trend videos, ridiculing Amber Heard's testimony in Johnny Depp case. Read that was one. It, was it 2 8 PM on May 9th? 
The very same day, E.J. Dixon, who I cannot stand at Rolling Stone, published her article. I, I'm sorry. I can't stand her articles. I'm sure she's a lovely person. I'm published not. her <laughs> article called Demoralizing and Demeaning, a Gross TikTok Trend Mocking Amber Heard is Going Viral at 2.32 p.m. Fuckers. Do you see the different the time difference? There's yeah. literally a 20 some minute difference between when these two were published and they weren't the only ones. This was just I caught it immediately as these came up after these two published many other many other and I, I didn't write them all down. Many other publications wrote the same article. Now I compared yeah. the two. No, I, real quick. I, yeah. I these motherfuckers I know. have cost me so much money. Who? Which ones? Uh, all this this little trend of articles like the TikToks, they weren't always couched as TikToks. Some of the other ones were just about social media clips of the Johnny Tep Amber Heard thing are gross, all that stuff. When we came back from break, the YouTube algorithm was tweaked. And uh oh, and no. those those clip videos they're starting to do a little bit better because the algorithm is still it's it's it runs I made on one its own and it got 300,000 views nick yeah, 300,000 views i made it what what, day, just though? uh just a couple days ago it was okay. after the break it was so it was well, after the break wait My, let me i'll tell you what day it was exactly cuz i've got it maybe it's just me but i made i have several million million and a half two million view uh videos um, from before the break, after the eight break, eight days ago. How? What? Well, it was eight days eight, ago. So okay, so eight days ago. Yeah, that's before the break. Break came back on, on Monday, right? So yeah. Okay, so that's so, less than eight days. Oh yeah, so it was eight. It got three hundred and twenty thousand views, which is a whole hell of a lot for my my videos. So let's see the my last video before the break, um, uh, was oh shit, May sixth. Yeah. May 6th was 262,000. May 12th, 196,000. The break we came back on the 16th, right? Mhm. Mm uh what what day was that article published? May 9th. Well, let me go back over to the screen so I can see it big. Well, uh, yeah, yeah, it it's May 9th. It was published on the 9th, wrote. the 9th. Uh -huh. Okay, so then um uh by May 13th. So May, May 12th, 196,000. May 13th, 42,000, 48, 48, 61. Then I got a 153, but that was a long video. It wasn't a clip. 58, 95. Then I got 347, but that one's six minutes. So not one of the minute long clips. And then uh, just yesterday, I finally got a, a, a 214. But we're talking all of these things would have been million view fodders prior to the break. Uh, cause I think I have, I think I have five videos that cracked a million that are all like 45 seconds to two minutes long. They published this article and then those videos stopped getting the traction that they had on the algorithm. And it pissed me off. <laughs> yeah, it's terrible, but you know, social big tech is awful. Big tech is just the worst, right? I mean, I've been, we've been writing about this forever. And if you guys, and I love, this is why I love your audience and the audience on YouTube and also in all the alternative media and what LawTube has, how LawTube is exploding and how the audience is really supporting this actual journalism that's going on. Uh, I love it. And I think, and I love you guys. I love all of you who are doing this, who are supporting us. Um, PJ Media has been growing so much because we actually do real journalism. We're we're not journal journalism ism isming. We're actually doing the work. You know, we're right. we're we're in there like finding the stories. I was the first person, by the way, to break the Shane, David Shane story. I was the first person to write about it. First person brave enough to write about David Shane and the fact that he's being me tooed all over the place. And uh, now. Now guess who's writing about it? The UK Wait, Guardian, the New York David Post. David Grandma Shane is being me too. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> and I was brave enough or stupid enough to write about it because I didn't know at the time how litigious this guy really is. But it turns out he's pretty litigious. I know this from personal experience. <laughs> I can't do you. <laughs> I can't talk too much about it, only to say that I can confirm with certainty that David Shane, Amber Heard's PR guy is very litigious. 
Oh man, that's uh, <laughs> that's too bad. It would be a real shame if someone called him David Grabass Shane. <laughs> team balls, man. Team balls. <laughs> Wonder if he's on team balls. Um, <laughs> someone quick, send a 19 year old who looks younger over to him. Oh, well, uh, the New York Post is now reporting that one of their reporters uh, was propositioned by David Shane in exchange for an exclusive interview with Amber Heard. And she has she, text messages. Did she say, wait, are you Stanley Tucci? And when he said <laughs> no, she said not interested. <laughs> her story is that he came up to her in the courtroom, put his hand on her a couple times, stroked her shoulder and said, uh, you're beautiful. Okay, so here we go. Uh, in, in law school, I'm in my torts class. And I had this guy, Steenson, who's who's like a legendary tort uh, lawyer in Minnesota, wrote like a couple of the books on torts or whatever. So he's my professor. I hated torts class. Like I'm not I'm not trying to jockey up my tort knowledge because of Steenson. Uh, I could barely hear him and didn't care. Um, but he, uh, <laughs> he he gives a scenario for like a uh, a civil for some civil uh unwanted touchings like a battery and so he says you know not every touching that appears to be a battery is a battery because you maybe you don't know that the people are involved right so you know they're dating and so he says like say i'm sitting here as a professor and i look down and the, you know there's a male and a female sitting next to each other in my class and uh and the, the male grabs her hair and rubs it and says you are very appealing <laughs> and i was like Dude, <laughs> you oh, are no. horrifying. Like oh, no. you are, you are psycho. Most human. Like I'm. <laughs> this, this is nasty. And he's like, but then he goes on to explain that. Uh, I, I think that something like this happened to him, but um, where he like called out, you know, this guy. But turns out they were dating or something. So it was like okay. But the way you phrase like you are very appealing, I was like, ew. Like how do you make that? How do you make like the least gross? phrase disgusting it's like well you have a 79 year old man say that's it right up context. there with it puts the lotion on its skin <laughs> yeah, <it's> like, <laughs> you're very appealing and i will just, be peeling your skin i will off be later. peeling your skin off later God, I, was, <laughs> I think i was weird um but no okay so sorry back to back to well, david Chain touching I women just... <laughs> no that's not what we were talking about that's what that's i was thinking so... about okay about, we're talking you know, about but I compared these articles. these articles I compared them and like they're very similar and you can go and you can read this um and just see how how similar they are and it's so it's clearly taken from a PR uh, a press release now press releases in them there's nothing wrong with a press release right I mean the media right. uses them all the time I write stories from a press release if I get something that interests me nobody gives me money though for it I get paid through PJ media so it has to grab my attention. Mm -hmm. I don't believe that this story grabbed these writers' attention. I believe that a lot of PR firms, and I've seen it happen firsthand. I can't say how I've seen it happen firsthand, but I have seen it happen firsthand where a PR person had somebody in their Rolodex that they could call to place a story somewhere very big in order to get the most attention. Now, for that particular instance, it was for a very good cause. Um, sure. But... But mostly they use the, those kinds of connections for celebrities like Kim Kardashian to tell her latest tale of how great her ass looks um, well, after she's studying her... for the bar exam. Exactly. So so they will place these stories, but normally they place them in magazines like People magazine where, you know, it's all paid for crap anyway. So nobody cares. Um they they normally do those sorts of things. But when they start placing stories into news magazines, and I guess you can't really call Rolling Stone a, a news magazine. It's, it's still entertainment. Variety is entertainment. But because these two stories went out and they were the first ones to go out, all the other real news organizations picked up these stories possibly from Variety and Rolling Stone and then re-reported them. You see? Oh, yeah. Because the reporters are not reporters. They're not journalists. They're repeaters. They just repeat what's in the news. And, and for the most part, I mean, I do that, too. I'll see a big story on the UK Guardian and I will write my own version. I mean, and that's like just kind of, you know, feeding off what's out there. Um, yep. 
But I also do my own investigative journalism work. In fact, I did a 27 part series of investigative journalism into court corruption in Missouri, which is an absolute it's the doorway to hell in Missouri. Frankly, it's the doorway to hell. There's nothing good about Missouri. If you are not if you have to go there, don't skip it. Um, and if you live there, get out as soon as possible. Uh, but but I mean, so some people still do journalism, but yeah, journalism. Thank you. Someone in the chat just said journalism. Yeah, you're yep. churning it out because the way we get paid now is by the number of clicks. But these two articles started a trend that just spread to the rest of the corporate media. And that's their new um, that's their new mantra now is that this is abuse. What's what we're doing, Nick, what we do on YouTube, oh, what they're yeah. doing in TikTok, it's all abuse and it's all it's not her fault. It's our fault. It's Johnny's fault. It's not the abuser's fault. Well, I've heard two things. Two things. One, um, I've heard these these things go together too. So uh and I've got this from a credible source. Um, you know, the the cool thing about being on YouTube. And as your channel grows and it doesn't have to grow very far, uh, you get sources that are shocking, like really quickly and people will send you all this information. I actually have some, uh, very high level contacts at places like Rolling Stone and variety. And they told me actually why they ran those press releases. <laughs> really? Mm -hmm. They were contacted by a PR firm and they said, that if you don't, we will send David Shane <laughs> into your lunchroom, into your showers. <laughs> that, I don't know why they have showers at Rolling Stone and Variety, but if there is, I've heard also that if there is a shower at a place, David, he can sniff it oh, out and he will God. be there. And, and, and then the follow up, this is the second thing I heard. This is from a second source, which helped me corroborate the first one. The second one is unconfirmed because I've only got this piece from the second source, but it confirmed the first part. And the second source was that and David cry. Shane knows what harassment is. That was the second source. Again, that one's not confirmed. I have, I, I don't have two sources on that one, but it corroborated the first source that they would send David Shane if they didn't publish the article. So <laughs> it makes me very happy, by the way. <laughs> and David Shane probably paid his attorney a thousand dollars or more to come up with the bullshit three page letter that I got. <laughs> and I can't tell you, it was it was worth every penny because when we're allowed to tear that thing apart. Nick, please have me back so we can go through it line by line. Please. Okay. Please. I hope I have a matching one. Uh, ad <laughs> uh, Adventures in Lauren Land says, apologies <laughs> have, if this has been asked before, but I heard that when deliberating, the jury won't have a trial transcript. What happens if they're, no, they, they never do. Uh, what happens if they're stuck in a decision and want to know something specific that none of them remember? Too bad. Uh, you're, Are you serious? You're, you first of all, it, this is a 24 day trial with eight hours a day of testimony. The trial transcript would take up the entire desk with stacks of paper. Um, so they're not going to do that. I, I mean, you've seen the, the deposition transcripts that they hand these people They're they're These are like, you know, a couple hours. And and there's lots of stuff cut out of them. They get they get redacted down for objections and stuff like that. These it would be like a stack like this for every day of just words because they write them huge yeah, you're right and they're they're well, like wait couldn't they get like i mean like you were saying you know how you're saying this trial is so technically superior to anything we've seen before which it really is like with the blowing up of the photos and everything why can't yeah. they just give them like uh you know what they should do they just just show them our our, our videos that we compiled yeah That's there you go just let them watch youtube and they will know exactly <laughs> what to do a select playlist of 48 <laughs> second clips. <laughs> I've got one. I've got one. I just made uh, just busting up. What's his name's testimony? Drew's testimony. Uh, uh, Josh Drew v. the LAPD. Look for that on my on my channel afterwards because it's great. I put yeah. him right up against the police officers where he's like, I showed them the damage. I pointed out the broken glass and the cops are like, yeah, he didn't show me anything. I didn't see anything. There was nothing there. <laughs> Yeah. No, it's uh but but no the um they don't 
juries are to go and, and here there's a very important reason why there's there's actual real reasons for this juries are supposed to use all of their natural human faculties to interpret the credibility of the witnesses and so oh, they are supposed to it's a lot of you're putting a lot of weight on their faculties i'm you know what? Like we get we get spoiled by behavior panel experts who are really good at mm. like explaining their intuition uh, and and having some training around things and and saying, okay, I know what to look for here, look for there. I the the one guy like, oh, I can tell you how your sentence structures are by these other books. But really, though, humans in general, we've evolved to be pretty good at not dying at the words of someone else. So we have a lot of these tools to help us get into uh, to get into the the sort of character of the person. And so if you gave them all transcripts, one, jury deliberations would take eons forever. And two, they would read cold words off the page that were not cold words in court. And they may so not they, remember what if one of them, though, is like one of those idiots that you that you know, you know, like, OK, there's always that guy in the room who thinks he heard something backwards yep. and he didn't it, it like, and you're going, no, that's not what was said. It was actually the opposite. And this asshole is like, Oh no, I know that's what I heard. And now you can't, what do you, you can't, you can't check. No, you can't <laughs> check. Um, We're screwed. No, it's it. That's, that's the system it's and and believe me, like personally, it's not a perfect system, but it's still the best system in the world. I, if I were going to court, I would choose the United States over any other system. For, oh, no, I for... agree. I agree. But in family court, though, you're screwed either way. Um, yes. I, I oh, gotta, yeah, yeah. I got to tell you. So um, here's why. OK, I'm getting a lot of shit over at PJ Media because I'm writing about this case completely that's all i'm doing right now i am live streaming it every day i am literally sitting on my ass in front of this computer for eight hours a day i'm doing what you're yes. i'm doing it. we're all doing it right yep and um i i am so obsessed and everybody at pj media no one else is following this case they're they look they're looking at me like i'm crazy and the commenters are like well why do we care about this we don't need to care about these hollywood douchebags we shouldn't care about this i'm telling you right now this is the trial of the century, it matters, and it matters for one reason. The Me Too movement is bullshit. I wrote a book about this years ago. It's called Believe Evidence. Do you see that? Do you see it says Believe yes. Women? It's scratched out. It says Believe Evidence, the death of due process from Salome to hashtag Me Too. The Me Too movement is one of the most dangerous and damaging things to our justice system that has ever come along. Exactly. Uh, we don't believe women. Look, what I wrote an entire book all about women who lied and cheated and, and fabricated evidence to put men in prison, including two racist white women who put nine black boys in jail, almost had them murdered, capital murder, because they made up a story about gang you know what which we can't yep. say on youtube and that now we can say gang rape can we can can we say that here because my channel always gets you know smacked when you say that word i how, can say it gang rape game rape game how, can, gang how rape. come you can say it three say times it. try gang it try rape. It. yes they, it, say it three times fast though like try it it's really hard <laughs> just try it try it say gang rape game rape gang, i can't do can't it. do it you try and, it. this is a trick of some sort isn't it because no, i could do it. gang raped gang raped gang raped <laughs> Holy shit, I can't do it. I just tried. I'm not joking. Like, but I, I'm telling normally you, normally I am. I'm not. You know no. that Me Too is a terrible, terrible thing to happen to due process. Oh, it's and the worst. We, we bait our entire justice system, like you were saying, it's the best in the world. And it's the best in the world for one reason because you are the accused is innocent unless, not until, unless proven guilty and the state bears the burden. So exactly. it doesn't matter if you're guilty, they better prove it. They better prove it. And it is better if 10 guilty men go free than one innocent man lose his freedom. It is better that 10, it is, it just is. Yep. And Me Too ruins due process and I can't take it any anymore. And if you think for one second that I'm not going to be glued to this television set, watching the Me Too movement crumble before my eyes. When I wrote about Justice Kavanaugh, right? this, is, this book is, is dedicated to Justice Kavanaugh. 
by the way, who got railroaded <laughs> and me too. And I don't even like the guy. He's kind of a dick. Yeah, but he kind of sucks. <laughs> he sucks. He turned out to be a really shitty judge, but I don't think he's a rapist. And it, he didn't deserve that. He did not deserve that Christine Blasey Ford. That's why I got invited on Tucker, by the way. I wrote an article. You'll laugh at this. It was called How to Christine Blasey Ford Proof Your Son. And uh, I ended up turning it into a book. So nice. go get it on Amazon because this really it means something. It means something that this trial is happening. And if this is the end of the Me Too movement, we can finally put a nail in this coffin. I will be grateful. Oh, it it, it needs to happen. You're a hundred percent right. Uh, this trial is it's important. It's and 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 people mistake things. They're like, well, this isn't going to change American jurisprudence. Like it's this case is not going to set a precedental decision in the courts. They're not going to cite Depp v. Heard most likely on any of these things unless something goes up to an appeals court or the Supreme Court of the state of Virginia or the Supreme Court of the United States. And those are unlikely outcomes. So what this will do, though, is get like th just think about how stupid this is. Emily Baker has one hundred and what, 15,000 people watching legal bites. 50, 55,000 people watching me, 40, 45,000 people watching law and crime, 750,000 people watching. Yeah. And that's just YouTube. We're not even talking about the TikToks. We're not talking about the short things. We're not talking about the news coverage. We're not talking about court TV and law and crimes off YouTube numbers. Millions of people are tuning into this thing and they're all going, wait, this is some bullshit. I mean, and, and it's great. It's opening up everyone's you, eyes. And to hear people say this doesn't matter. I'm like, I want to bitch slap you like nine ways from Sunday. How can you say that? How can you as a conservative person who has watched the the breakdown of justice in this country brought to us by far left radical, crazy feminist hags? How can you let that's them how get you really away? feel? I <laughs> read the book. It's even worse. <laughs> if you can believe that it's even worse. Uh, I do. I've, you know, I, I just don't know how you can say that this is not important just because it, it stars two Hollywood people. Andrew Breitbart, the great Andrew Breitbart said politics is downstream of culture. He would be so disappointed in you conservatives out there who are just, too, you're just too, you're better than that. You're better than that to get down in the, in the gutter with the, with the culture. Well, guess what? If you let the culture go on the way it's going, uh, you're going to you deserve what here? you get. That's how we got here. That's why the daily wire is so freaking great for getting into entertainment. That's what we have to do. We have to do it. We have to write books. We have to write comic books. And by the way, shout out to John De La Rose, by the way, who is writing terrific based comic books. He is get, he's, he's fantastic. He writes science fiction novels. Find him on YouTube. He's one of my fit, my daughter's favorite authors. He's based Had him on the show a couple of times. He, oh, did you? I didn't mm -hmm. know that. He's one of my best friends. Um, you know, Tell him I said, hi. I will. I, I, I invite him on my live stream. Um, uh, he, he pops in every once in a while on the trial, uh, but he's funny. <laughs> yeah. JDA. Everybody, okay. The chat knows JDA. Good. You should, because people like him need support uh, and Ethan Van Skyver and the people who are out there doing the creating culture. I, I, yep. I, I covered comic skate. I believe that culture matters. And I'm one of the only people uh, at least that I know of who really spends a whole lot of time like it where I work doing this culture kind of work and covering the culture. And every time somebody complains in my comments about it, I pledge to write 10 more articles about this trial. <laughs> and I You're could. Like my spirit animal. <laughs> I know. I know. I knew I, I knew you would love me. That's why I had to get your attention. I was like, this guy is my people right here. <laughs> Yeah, no, it's uh, it's great. I, I've talked to, uh, you know, EVS is a friend of mine. Um, I've talked to him more than JDA, but uh, you, I had John De La Rose on a couple times back uh, a long time ago because I was covering Comics Gate. Um, I've talked uh, I've talked to Vox Day, although I haven't talked to him in a while. Oh, Vox Day. Uh, I haven't talked to him in a while either. But uh, but he and he was he was fighting with Owen Benjamin on, against Patreon, which is hilarious to me. Um, all of that stuff. So so, yeah, but. The reason we're where we are politically is because in the 60s, we started surrendering culture. And uh, and, right. and frankly, like it's it's um, one of my one of my very crude things that I say that I have some crude tendencies, but I miss 
gratuitous breasts in movies from the 80s because they're a barometer of where culture is. Mm. But when you look at these 80s and 90s action movies, horror movies or whatever, they weren't afraid to show nudity. And then as you get into like now, you won't find it. And it's like if there it's it's gone the opposite way to where they will artificially not have naked people where naked people should be. <laughs> and I'm like this doesn't make sense. Why aren't you doing this? And it's because of these weird like sensitivities. I learned there's a new position in Hollywood. Have you heard about the intimacy coordinator in Hollywood? Well, actually I have. And I actually think it's a good idea. Uh, it, I'm probably going to disagree with you on this one. No, it's no, no. A, I think it's, it's a, a good idea. It's a good idea, but it's not. I can guarantee you it's not being implemented in the right way. It's going to turn into like some woke bullshit. It already what? is. Oh, well, the, is it? The Frank Frank Langella got fired the other day uh, from a Netflix show. Uh, you know, Frank I Langella. keep hearing his name float around, but I haven't read the story. What happened? So he's he's on the set. They have to do a steamy scene of some sort. The intimacy coordinator, who's you know who it is, right? They got like a lip ring. They're twenty four. <laughs> Right. And they've they've done yoga or something and they're going to come be an intimacy coordinator. And it's like your only experience is getting railed after Barney. So uh, they're, they're going to come be an intimacy coordinator. He, Frank Langell says your advice is stupid. This is not how human intimacy works. And then they do the scene and he touched the leg of his female co-star. Uh, and and she it was not in an agreed upon manner whatever the fuck that actually means but wasn't he directed to do it i have no well he disagreed with the intimacy coordinator who knows oh no okay. but he said he said this isn't you know he's like i've done love scenes before this is what it is now it doesn't say he touched her genitalia he rubbed her chest or anything like that he touched her leg somewhere that was not agreed upon fired he's he's being me too I don't know. Maybe he's a weird guy. Maybe he like grabbed her butt. I don't know. But like the way I read the story, I'm like, well, this sounds, this sounds really like some bullshit. And now they've got this position. And, and again, an intimacy coordinator sounds like, oh yeah, we want to make sure people are are good on set. And, and yeah, I well, you agree. Know Kim, you know, Kim Cattrall, who was in I know uh, the Sex in the City. Yeah. She played Samantha Jones on Sex in the City. And, and one of the things, the reason my YouTube channel actually took off is because during that awful woke ass reboot of Sex in the City and just like that, I lost my shit and made a video <laughs> <clears throat> because I was actually a fan of that show when I was in my 20s and sure. they ruined it. And it was back then, it was a body show, you know? Yeah. Came, oh, it absolutely was. Totally body show, but it was very politically incorrect. And it was actually really funny. Sometimes they did their lefty stuff, you know, like they always do with the feminism and this stuff like that. But it they didn't take themselves too seriously. And so it was fun. It was a lot of fun. Samantha Jones, the character of Samantha Jones, is always naked in Sex and the City. She was always naked. She was always doing these outrageously comedic, very hilarious physical comedy while naked. The woman is talented. Okay. She can make you laugh without even saying a word. And uh, so she's an incredible actress. Kim Cattrall is, is, is uh, classically trained. She's actually a very, very good actress. Well, she's in Big Trouble in Little China. Mm -hmm. She was. And in her What else do you need to know? Is and in her in her um scenes in Sex and the City back then in the 90s, um she in this new interview she did, she was talking about how she was very uncomfortable with a lot of the sex scenes because she yeah. was always the one who was required to be naked on that show and she was the only one that didn't have a nudity clause. And and she realized it was her part, but um they were very like they were kind of like mocking her on set and like eat, the only thing she was given was like this tight, they called it the KC cup, the Kim Cattrall cup. And it was a, like a jock strap. Right. And that was the only thing that she was allowed to wear. And like during these, these scenes and like no one offered her a robe, no one like, so they're just, they just had this very nonchalant attitude towards it. And I can see how as an actress, especially going into it, like not, particularly being that wanting to stop doing nude scenes at some point, but like can't do it. She's now reporting that she had an intimacy coach for this, some other thing that she was in recently. And she said the experience was so much different 
she just felt so much better about it just because there was somebody there looking out for her dignity, uh, like making sure there was a rope. So like she was covered when she got up from a scene and like there wasn't and, like no one, no gawking cameramen, no gawking grips, no, you know. Yeah, and that's how it, that's how it should be. Like, first of all, you shouldn't need an intimacy coach for that. That, that I know. My, why, why aren't they just being decent human beings? Why? Right. But my, or, or even like, and, and this, this may sound awful, but why doesn't she have an agent doing that already? Mm -hmm. Like mm -hmm. why, why isn't, and like, if the agent can't get someone there, then the agent is doing it or the, the personal assistant, like <laughs> the, the you, chat, the chat wants to know where to apply for this job. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> But no, where my, do I go to apply? My my problem with it is like everything, it sounds like a great idea. Yeah, but it's it'll going get woke. to be it's it's already <laughs> it's already led to a me too. And the thing just started. Like this is brand yeah. new and it's already led to one me too. I think there there were two me too's in um in Hollywood in the like within the past two weeks. And uh, it was Frank Langella and someone else. And it's like, I, I, I don't know these, like, I don't care about these people. I don't know. I'm not like familiar with Frank Langella's body of work. I don't fucking care. I just know <laughs> I don't his even name know from the article. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I, effectively. I can't his face. We should bring him. We should bring up his yeah, face. Just so we can I, see. We can, maybe we will yeah. recognize him, but we don't know his name. I won't. Uh, Frank Langella. <laughs> Here he is. Here's. Uh, actually, I think I do recognize him, but. um. You probably will too. I don't know what he's from, but I've seen him in stuff. Here we go. Oh yeah, yeah. I, so I know, but, I've I've seen him in a lot of stuff. But again, I I I want to stress like his me doing. This guy is doing an intimate scene. His hands are going to be on someone. That's why they have the person. It was less, I think, about the nature of the touch and more about the fact that it wasn't agreed upon. And now you have ammunition for a me too event. And this is an actor who's done this. This is an older guy who's apparently, you know, purportedly got some experience in, in intimacy throughout his life. And, uh, and, and, and now he's, he's done because of this thing. And I just worry about it because it's, it's like adding an HR department. It's like, Oh, it's really great. We're this small business. We've been going well. It's like, we're, we've, we've got to like 27 employees. We're going to, we're going to hire an HR director. And then they hire like a, as someone who just got their master's in human resources <laughs> and they're fresh out and you're like, Oh shit, this workplace is going to hell immediately. Um, it's that, that's what bothers yeah. me about it's it. It's going to be I, like the extension of human resources now in the, yeah, yeah, that's, that's bad. It's going to, it's going to get cocked real fast. Yeah. And I, and I do like, I, I think the concept of the intimacy coordinator, what you're saying, obviously make sure there's a robe. Right. Clear yeah. the set of all non-essential people for the nude scenes. You plan the days that you're going to yeah, do no, these things. No actress or actor should feel exploited on a movie set. No. And, and to hear her tell it, they just did not care that she was uncomfortable. And that's that's so not OK. I'm a person, though, at this point in my life, I've seen enough nudity in shows like I kind of feel like can we just get rid of the intimacy coach and also get rid of the nudity? And then we won't have a problem. Could we just, Op I'm the opposite. I want twice as much. You want I twice want as much times as much nudity. I want nudity wherever it like anywhere it can be squeezed in because <laughs> I want the pendulum to swing so far back the other way. I want us to get away. That we go from... back to Lucy and Ricky in the separate beds. No, we do this weird thing where we're okay. We're, we're like, I'm so We're sick getting... of anybody's fetish in my face. Like I, I don't, I don't want to know your kink, and and I don't want to see midget sex on Game of Thrones. Oh no, no, no. correct. Okay, let me be very clear. <laughs> I want very specifically '80s and '90s nudity back. Like I want. Well, we cast the playmate of the month for I, I don't know. Maybe she was February. Who cares? Like just get her in there. She pops out of the cake in Under Siege, right? That was Miss June, I believe. She pops out of the cake. She does her little dance naked, and it's like this gratuitous scene, and then it's done. No, I I want that because it it goes back to this thing that we can we can be attracted to attractive things. We can uh, we can have moments of levity, mirth, and relaxation. We can because uh, now it's like we we got rid of nudity, but we've replaced it with this this disgusting crudeness. And like what you're saying here is like, now if we have nudity, it, it's gotta be midget sex. You gotta have Lena Dunham naked. It's like, please no, a or bullet like those, before that. Those, 
those weird scenes in Game of Th- Games of Thrones or Game of Thrones where I- I've had too much to drink. Obviously, Games of Thrones uh, <laughs> where those were like you know that awful Joffrey person is hurting women, and I I was yeah. so uncomfortable with that. I was so. I don't know. It just, it's just enough already. Like, can we, can we just, I don't know. I just, I don't want to see it. I just don't want to see it anymore. And I just feel like, I know that the chat's like, you're losing the audience. We hate you now. <laughs> no, I'm it's, not it's, trying to take away your porn. Easy. Go ahead and have fun with your ED. You no, know, But see that, that there's the difference, right? In Die Hard, in Die Hard, they bust into one of the offices because they take Nakatomi Plaza, right? You've seen yeah. Die Hard. Yeah. I can oh. tell. They, Every I, Christmas. I can, they, they they take Nakatomi Plaza. The, the These guys, they bust into all the offices. And in one of the offices. Yeah, that's right. Two, that's two of the right. people. Because, of course, you're at this giant Christmas office party uh, at this thing in the 80s. Everybody's on cocaine. Yeah. Two people are going to be banging in one of the offices. Yeah. And so the girl has to run out topless. That's it. It's just not some drawn out like pornographic scene. It's just the recognition. I, I just of- I miss the fade out, Nick. I I don't need to really see what happens after the fade out. I, I miss the fade out. Like well, yeah, you know, that's give what me I'm a saying. good kissing scene and then fade to black, and you can wake up in the morning in the same bed, and everybody knows what happened. I don't need to see the working under the sheets part. Like, and also when you're then you get stuck watching these movies with your parents. <laughs> That's right? the best. Oh God, I'm watching stuff with my parents, and I'm like, uh, I gotta go to the bathroom. I mean, like, what I can't watch this with my dad. Why are no, why is Hollywood doing this to me? And again, it, it, it we're we're talking about two different things. I'm not calling for porn scenes, I'm not calling for Just sex the occasional scenes. tits and incidental <laughs> gratuitous nudity. Nudity like in the- that in the uh, in the locker room scene when like the door blows open and there's just like guys and jocks porkies. walking around yeah yeah and, and, and porkies like the oh, they got the little peephole yeah. and it's like <laughs> it's, that's what I'm I'm not like I, yeah. I I don't if I want porn I can find it now it's the chat simple. is split between loving me and now hating me <laughs> you lost me <laughs> uh, okay here we go we're gonna do a poll in the chat <laughs> boobs in movies. Yes, no, that's it. That's of the only. Of course, it's going to be a hundred percent yes. That, it that... will not. I promise you. There's For some Catholics boobs? in the chat. Well, I'm a Catholic, and I'm not opposed to boobs in movies. But I, but I See, don't. Then really... we agree. Yeah, I mean, I'm not. I'm not saying that like a topless scene would bother me. It doesn't. I, that is less upsetting in front of my dad, right? Yeah. Like a, a topless scene, way less. I have to. That's the measure I'm using. Could I sit down with my mom and dad and watch this and not be embarrassed? Well, and there are plenty of non-nude scenes that are way more like gross and violative than any boob scene will ever be, right? Yeah, like that, probably. And, I and mean, so boobs we, are not offensive. I'm not. I didn't say that. And I and I'm a big fan of boobs in comics, by the way. All that baloney about not <laughs> not. Not drawing women to look vo- like voluptuous because it's not realistic. It's a fucking comic. Like, br- what are you talking? Of course, yeah, they're supposed uh, to look super hot and sexy. What does Superman look like? I was in love with Superman. Superman was my first love. Are you kidding? Those guns, that those abs. This is amazing. Spider Man is five four with a twelve inch penis, like <laughs> crammed into his little hot. suit. Spider Man is uh, not hot. Superman no, is not. hot. No, but when they draw Spider Man in like his little suit, he's got this massive bulge. I'm like true, the he guy, does. He, Peter Parker is not a big dude, but he's. They always draw a massive, but because it's a comic book, like that's it, it's this it's this hyper visualization of the human body because these are super people, like they're they're above, they're the aspirational. Exactly, thing. they're supposed to look like that. If you start drawing them with love handles and and roles like I have, like I don't, nobody wants to see that. Ain't nobody want to see that. Like, not even no me. wants to see me naked. I don't want to see that either. Like, come on now. Uh, and that's why I like, you know, what JDA is doing and, and the guys who are fighting back against this. They, the idea that you can't have fantasy drawing anymore because it, they don't look like um, fat undergrads with pink hair. You know, fuck off. I hate these people. Yeah. See, so there's, they I think we're so actually. Old. I think we're more in agreement on this as we nuance down the issue because it's like 
uh, and and here's my ultimate conclusion. We're way off the fucking rails on this, but um, here's my ultimate conclusion. Well, now to this. the chat wants to see me naked. I never said that. <laughs> <laughs> the ultimate conclusion is this: we are on a progressive crudity path for society. We are we are moving directly towards hedonism. Uh, freaking pedophilia is where it's going. All this groomer poly bullshit, polyamory, pedophilia, uh, Sick. bestiality. We're we're going we're going full. I want to go the opposite way, wherever that is. I do too, but but we are doing it, and then at the same time, we're like, well, we respect women, so we're gonna remove breast scenes from movies. Like you you can't find them in twenty twenty. Like they don't exist anymore. Uh, it's, it's weird unless it's in a movie like bang gang, which is about a bunch of teenagers fucking each other. Oh, it's like, yeah. wait, th this is like, this is not, oh, no, yeah, like, no, no. I haven't seen so, euphoria, but I imagine it's like that. It's, it's, yeah. So we're moving towards degeneracy, but pretending prudity at the same time. It's like, I would yes. much rather have, uh, the chick walk by in Terminator and, you know, in his little eye thing and she runs by naked for whatever reason. I would take that any day over uh, half of the shit that's on TV and the, the, the way they portray intimacy, the way they portray human relationships, the way they portray husband and wife or husband and husband or wife and wife, whatever it may be for that show. Like they're getting gross relationships and human relations are getting offensive. They're doing it on purpose. They're making it. They're oh, making absolutely. It unattractive. It's, well, it's broke. Sex yeah. Is broken. All these people who claim they're pansexual, by the way, all this pansexual, everything beyond the TQAI plus, you know, beyond the LGBT, yeah. all those people, uh, none of them are actually having sex. The studies are saying that they're not having sex at all. Like they're literally not having sex. They are celibate while at the same time pushing these extremely hedonistic lifestyles of which they are not taking part, probably because they look like Jabba's little cousin. but. Yeah, and they don't have any money. So it's both <laughs> avenues are deleted. <laughs> it's not it's not like the, the people having the best sex in America are married people. That's those are the statistics. Uh heterosexual married people and pe mostly people who go to church. Now isn't that weird? It's, <laughs> so a, it's a weird one. <laughs> uh, it's like, well, maybe in Johnny Depp's house church that he was doing. Uh, <laughs> just kidding. Yeah, he, lives, he lives in the house church. It's true. He lives in Paris or France. Yeah, he has Paris. he owns a villa and or a village and it includes a church. Where he sleeps. And he lives in it. Did you read that that article, that GQ article? That was nuts. I would I would buy a church in a heartbeat. I a friend of mine was working, someone bought like a local church that got uh you know it, it shut down and so the building was sitting there and they were converting it into a home. I mean, your living room is huge and cool and like massive uh and yeah churches make really cool houses uh when i was in college um my wife and i babysat for someone one of the professors had a uh they owned a church out in the country and it was like man is the stairways like 30 feet wide and you <laughs> walk up it into this huge living room cool. and then you go downstairs and you got all the different rooms spaced out for like the live for like bedrooms and stuff it was cool. it was awesome I, I would live in a church well the, the the opportunity is available I want to put this out to the ether that uh, uh, Johnny Depp if you want someone to give you to come out to your church in uh, France and and actually do a good interview with you and not not screw you over like all these variety magazines Magazines and Hollywood people, uh, I'll do it. I would sacrifice that. Stay for a week with you at your Paris thing or Fa France thing. I won't even make you pay for me. <laughs> yeah, because because I'm not a I'm I'm not a freeloading Yahoo succubus kind of person. I'll just tell the story. You'd be living in a penthouse in a week. <laughs> <laughs> I'll tell you what. I might be tempted to move into one of those little houses on the island. I I could uh, be I could be talked into that. Let me let me hit a couple. But more only of these if the jar chats. of cocaine. Only if the jar of cocaine is there. <laughs> gotta have gotta have the coke jar. <laughs> bon Necron four 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 BTDT. I don't know what that means. I've had my experience with vampires. Uh, oh, been there, done that. Suck you by in of oven covens of satanic witches. But I had enough sense to walk away. Feel bad for Johnny Depp. No, he he did it too. He kicked him out. That which is good. Finally, ben, 
Ben George, meanwhile, in the real world, human life is at risk. But F that, let's focus on BS and poop stains in some millionaire's bed. See House Judiciary hearing on abortion care access. Abortion is murder, not care. Again, uh, there, there are multiple issues going on. This is this is opening the eyes to due process. And if you want to protect fetuses, you have to have due process to yeah. confer that due process to a fetus. Um, that's that's a critical issue here. They don't recognize babies as people, but if they do start recognizing babies as people, as people, the due process part of it has to be in check. And if we sacrifice due process to to some sort of woke culture, you'll never get it. You'll never get protection at all. That's what the courts are there to do. Um, so I I I actually think that the Johnny Depp thing is fully in the real world, personally. Uh, Captain Redbeard, I've been wondering all day, did anyone else puke a bit when Turd's friend said that at the party, they all went around and said one nice thing about Amber sounded sickening. And I would have responded like Johnny Depp did too. I hate to, sometimes we do that at Thanksgiving, like name one thing you're thankful for. And the whole family standing around just waiting for Turkey. And they all have to go, oh, I, I don't know, gas, uh, or whatever gas, not gas prices uh, the, that it exists. And I can drive. To a restaurant while you make me wait for food, please. Can we eat? I, I hate that thing. I hate the, okay, sorry. Roger the trucker. Hey man, love the show. I tweeted at you. Do you think I'll get a job offer at, uh, at our plant three, three, seven. You tweeted at me. Do I, let me tell you guys about Twitter. Twitter is not good at delivering at, like ads to you. Um, I don't, I don't, you got to DM me. What the hell? Uh, hold on. Let me see what you tweeted. I, I haven't even, I have not seen your tweet, but that is a huge super chat. So I will certainly entertain it. What, what do you got? Plant three, three, seven. Wait, that's, is this, this isn't you. I don't see a tweet from you here. Our plan through three seven. Am I crazy? Did you did you actually mean you DM'd me? Is that what happened? I fucking hell. I can't find it, man. I don't know. I don't know what you're talking about. Sorry, brother. Uh, I don't I don't see it anywhere. Um, Brandon James. Shit. Thing just jumped on me. One second. Brandon James, Amber's mind is like the Platte River, a mile wide and an inch deep. <laughs> Jerk off juggernaut. The only book I own is a pocket constitution. That's a good book. AWM Fishing. Amber sues her legal team. Her legal team hires just Camila to cross-examine her again. <laughs> <laughs> I love that idea. Uh, Brian Mrzinski says doors into living spaces open inward. Doors into utility service areas open outward. There you go. Um, Mike Hawkert's Amber could have pushed the door and then moved forward as Depp pushed it back onto her toes, which she then proceeded to whack him on the jaw. I'm playing devil's advocate. There. I, I actually don't doubt in any way that he might've tried to push the door closed and it went on her toe. Uh, that that's not surprising to me. Um, I don't, I don't know if that is supposed to be controversial. Crusade is viewing says pineapple on pizza and also sauerkraut. Oh, Scott Fletcher, Megan, now we've seen your thumbs. What's up with those feet, girl? <laughs> you never get it. I actually have very nice feet. I'm definitely not going to show them on a live stream. That's never going to happen. Uh, Skeet Neat says, Nick, why are there Jewish so many guest stars on your show? Have you, have you met a lawyer? Uh, you don't want to lose your tip, do you? Also, pineapple is fine. Anchovies are godlike on pizzas. Do I, uh, this th are you Jewish, Megan? No, I'm Catholic. I think maybe he thought you were Jewish. I get that a lot. I I'm not sure why. I don't know. It could be my nose. I don't know. I have my I have my grandmother's nose. It's it's I'm, prominent. It's I'm Catholic. <laughs> but I like where it. I was. I, it's very I was straight. raised. <laughs> yeah, I, I was raised Catholic. I have uh, I get called uh, Jew all the time. Um, so maybe it's a Catholic thing. 
I have people say that about me all the time. I, I don't know. I, I think it's possible that one of my relati uh, relatives, maybe, perhaps, way back, I'm not sure. Uh, I have some family, I think, who came from Germany, and it's it's possible, but we've always been um, Protestant, and then I became a Catholic. So, don't Lazy know. Bastard says, this Megan Fox is the only one smart enough to stay away from that dirty, busted-up machine gun that she found buried under Ethan Ralph's trailer <laughs> off of 800-pound Mile Road. Uh, Scott Fletcher, this is the superior Megan Fox, and it's not even close. Bad vibes. Nick, tell her about Vic Mignogna, please. He needs more press. Um, I mean, do you know about Vic Mignogna? He was a, a big Me Too case that I covered in the anime no, industry. No, I don't. Okay, well, I've done about 2,000 videos about Vic Mignogna from years ago. I'll have to make myself um, a note. Oops, I just dropped my His pen. His story is is one of just absolute non-sensory. Uh, and he, he's, he's been fully canceled. Um, and, uh, the people still hound him to this day, you know, people who said, oh, we're not actually out to destroy Vic. They're, they're out to destroy Vic. They still try and cancel convention appearances that he secures. His case, uh, was thrown out through, uh, due to an anti-slap motion and, um, it has been appealed and, uh, we're waiting to see what happens, but it's been a mm. long road. COVID has really slowed down that process on the appeal. Oh, COVID slows down, has slowed down, slowed down the entire yeah. judicial system is bad. It's a disaster. Michael Ludwig, uh, one out of two. Thank you so much for streaming this. Thanks uh, to seeing this, the audio, your commentary, and even Andrew's short statement about his first wife. I just got out of a toxic three-year relationship and I'm not going back. I thought it was just me, even when others said it wasn't me, especially her love letters and the crazy cackling abuse audio. Thank you. Uh, you're mm. welcome, Michael. It sounds like you're in a bad spot and I hope you uh, hope you find someone more suitable. Jared Tisdale, coming from someone abused in this way and worse by a wife and prostitute mother, there's nothing more important. Feeling worthless and believing you are and deserve abuse or suicide shouldn't go on. Johnny is hope to the hopeless. Crown target, intimacy coordinator. Everything is just more bureaucracy and bureaucracy is famous for not being able to do the job they actually are intended. Just another way of passing responsibility away from where it should reside. Uh... Yeah, I mean, I, I can't believe directors aren't. I can't believe there's not contract, uh, contracted intimacy stuff automatically. Like that to me, that's it's like I feel like if I were the agent or the lawyer for a woman or a man doing nude scenes, that, isn't that, that would, your job? Yeah, that would be a section of the contract in yeah. bold and caps, and and with liquidated damages clause. If you violate this, you owe my client twelve million dollars immediately because their dignity has no price. You know that Just type of like stuff. Like a lawyer, Romo drummer, <laughs> and I'll take ten percent. Uh, Ro <laughs> Romo drummer says, "FYI, Nick Depp is selling his village in France. Look it up." Well, yeah, because he's he's out of money. Uh, well, I, he's not out of money, but he's he can't afford the lifestyle that he had. It was. It was too crazy. No, he's like selling everything. Zaluarg says this Megan Fox is hotter than the other. Oh, well, there that's awfully sweet. Um, it's not it's, true, but it's very sweet. Thank you. You know, I I don't I don't necessarily agree. I think um, because uh, okay, so I've I've talked about this a lot in the in the context of the Amber Heard case. I think there are so many people out there who Amber Heard is presumptively pretty. But the moment her mouth opens, mm. you're like, no, like people, there, there are people in the chat who even say, I wouldn't have a one night stand with Amber Heard. And I'm like, really? Like, I don't know. Cause I'm married and I, I genuinely don't think that way. I don't. And I was never, I was never good at that anyway. <laughs> like I, I do not have a legion of one night stands. Um, I, that was not my style. Uh, so I don't know what that life is like. So for me, it's kind of form, but I think on it and and then there are a bunch of people who are like, no, she's hideous to me. So I think, uh, I, I think personality really does make people far more attractive, it, literally in the yeah, physical sense. Too. Every, I can't see Amber as pretty anymore. People keep saying she is. And I've said from the beginning of this, after I saw, I heard her recordings back in 2020, actually. Uh, and I wrote about it then I, I said, I can't see her as anything, but that ugly thing that comes out of her in those recordings. And unfortunately, Every time I see her face, it's just, it's darkness to me. So I, I know exactly what you mean. Uh, yeah, you're right. 
Yeah. So don't don't sell yourself short. You're you're hilarious. <laughs> and you're also pretty. Like stop. Uh, thanks. Stop. Um okay, I used to be so. when I was younger and thinner, but we're all <laughs> older and fatter now. So but it's okay. I, I I've been there, done that. <laughs> uh let's see what uh Scott Fletcher says. Even Julianne Moore got a robe in Boogie Nights when done with the scene. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And that was that was in Boogie Nights. Holy <laughs> crap. Great yeah. movie, by the way. Um, okay. We're at a junction here. Um, it's late uh, already. I have to do unbreaded. Oh, God. And you here have goes. to decide if you're going to be on for unbreaded. You have three Two. options, really. Okay. You what can, are the options? You can gracefully leave. You have a real media job and you have no reason to be involved with the lunacy of unbreaded and, and no this one will true. think any less of you. Um, you have, you have option two where you can be on the stream while I do unbreaded or you have option three where you can do unbreaded. The least wise of all options is option three. It's option three. Yeah. I, yeah. I see that the chat is so bad. They are, they're cheering for me to do this, but I can't, I can't no, do I, it. I really like, <laughs> I can't. honestly, I, I'm I, making Amber heard movements with my mouth right now. I'm like, Oh yeah, uh, no, uh, I, I can't do it. I think it's fun <laughs> and funny. And everybody in this chat will understand that, uh, that you, you have a sense of humor, but you're also a media personality and there's, you know, it, it, it's something I've considered quite a bit. Like at some point, like a clip is going to come out of me doing this thing out of context. <laughs> totally. And, yes. And then I'm going to be sitting there going, now let me tell you why I say kill all the Asians. <laughs> <laughs> like it's just, Explain your use of mongoloid. Well, here's what, what you have to understand. There's this guy, Matthew Harris. Okay. So, uh, and, and, uh, you know, if you give me a, a, a three minute Tucker segment, it's going to be hard to explain it away in three minutes. So I, I tend to recommend people not stay for it, but, um, uh, yeah, no, I'm going to, I'm going to go anyway, because I have to get up at six 30 to get children on the bus. Uh, oh and I have to do the, all the mom stuff. I don't know how uh, you're, I don't know how you guys do it, but I guess your wife is probably sleeping right now. So she gets up and does it, but my wife's uh, asleep and we have, we, we hired uh, a nanny to help with all the driving. Cause since we homeschool, oh, yeah. like our, our kids don't oh, get on a bus. Too? Oh my gosh. Yeah. Mine get on a bus. Now I used to homeschool, but now they're on the bus. So I have to get up and do all that. Cause my husband has a real, real job. And uh, so he's up and out. So I am going to have to go, but I wanted to say something. I have, yeah. I have, I have a toast for you. Oh, really? I do. Can I toast okay. to Nick? You can, I guess I should pour some liquor. Hold on. Yeah. yeah. Oh, you don't have liquor. Well, you're going to have to have that. Well, I just finished my glass. So <laughs> I have been listening to your toasts for a while now. <laughs> and before I give you mine, I want to say that the other night, should I ever need to cry on cue? <laughs> like I'm on the stand and it has to happen. Uh, I can absolutely recall the toast you gave to a man the other day who said to you he lost his dog. And your toast was he went to sleep <laughs> hoping <laughs> that when he woke up, you would be there. God Aww. damn it, Nick. <laughs> I cried for two days, <laughs> two days because I lost my dog two years Aww. ago and my, I'll cry right now thinking about it. you, you fucker. <laughs> I, what kind of a guy gives a toast like that to a guy who just lost his dog, hoping that when he woke up, you, you would be there. That was the nicest thing I could possibly oh, say. Come on. Gee, okay, no, but that's not my toast. My toast to you. <laughs> my toast to Nick. <laughs> to Rackets. <laughs> the first broadcaster who made me tune in after we lost the great Rush Limbaugh. I have, I have missed him every day. There's a hole in my day. But rackets came along and filled the night. And for that, I thank you forever 
because I didn't think I was going to get through it. I really didn't. But it, it's back. So thanks. Thanks for Thank Cheers. you. Cheers. Hmm. <coughs> high praise. Uh, and God high, bless Rush. God bless high Rush. praise. Absolutely. The uh, the primogenitor of of broadcast, in my opinion, changed changed the entire the entire field. Uh, absolutely, Rush is great. And that is he sincerely also high me. praise. He used to he used to read my articles every day, sometimes twice a day. <laughs> so uh, that, of course, is the most important thing about. Yes. <laughs> about <all of> <laughs> That could go on your tombstone. Your tombstone. It's in my, well, I have him saying it in my uh, in my uh, intro on my on my show, so it's fun because I what's have going him. on. What's going on my tombstone is uh, David grab ass Shane never <laughs> got a chance to grab me. That's going on my tombstone. <laughs> I can't wait. I heard there were people in the chat who said uh, David Shane grabbed them. We might have to contact them. <laughs> well, if you've ever been grabbed by David Shane, <laughs> and we know there's some of you out there, you might want to contact one of us. No, please do. <laughs> Always investigating. It's been a lovely evening. Thank you so much. I feel like I made it to the Johnny Carson show. It's like the biggest moment of my life. Thank you, everyone. Oh, and by eat the shit, way, eat shit, Tucker. I love you, Tucker. <laughs> <Eat shit. laughs> By the way, the chat, you guys, you pushed my YouTube channel over 10,000 subscribers tonight. Yes. And I I promised my viewers that if I hit 10,000 during this trial, I was going to show up and do the stream in full pirate regalia. So tomorrow, <laughs> I now Whoa. have to get up and dress up like a pirate for the live stream tomorrow. That's happening. I have my hat already. It's right here. See, I'll give you a preview. I've, I've got... <laughs> I've got the, it's got a feather on it and everything, but I can't get it on because I've got headphones on. Oh my goodness. That'll be a disaster. <laughs> I love it. It's going to be a total it. disaster. <laughs> I have to now find a jug to drink out of. Damn it. <laughs> <laughs> what <it> was... <laughs> uh, All righty. Uh, good night, everybody. Good night. It's been a genuine pleasure, Megan. We'll talk again soon. All right. All right. Well, guys, that was Megan Fox. Her channel is linked in the description, of course. If you have not gone uh, to check it out, make sure you do. Read her articles on PJ Media, one of the only one of the only places where you can actually get some honest journalism still in this day. Um, uh, that was that was a whole lot different than I thought it was going to go in all of the best ways. Um, you, you never know. Like again, you never know when you you're bringing on a new person, how that interaction is going to go. And that was, uh, that was, that was a 10 out of 10. In my opinion, you guys seem to enjoy it. We've had tons of people watching for all hours of the night here. So that that's great. Thank you. Um, all right. There, there's a time and a place for everything. I'm bread. And the time and the place for unbreaded is right now. Look, if you are new here, and you may be, if you are new here and you may be, this is, uh, this is, we, we discussed this with Megan. This is the manifesto of a man named Matthew Harris. It is called Death Sentences. Matthew Harris is a PhD holder from Duke University. His PhD is in philosophy. He is a UCLA professor of philosophy. Um, he posted this to the UCLA department board and, uh, and also sent some emails to the other UCLA philosophy faculty that he was going to murder all of them. Uh, we read this one random page a day out of context of this to remind ourselves what the, what the difference is between crazy and comedy and truth. Sometimes those things are a little bit blurred and death sentences has has these elements sporadically through all of it so this is not glorifying violence it's very important to note that there was no 185 is the number the page number there was no actual violent act committed by uh by matthew harris and he was not despite what the media reported he was not arrested due to the manifesto he was arrested due to his threatening emails and those threatening emails do appear to be violent threats. And we do not condone in any way, 
uh, actual credible threats of violence. Uh, those are not protected speech. They are a violation of people's rights. And, uh, and that is, that is very different than what we're doing now. So with that, if you are easily offended, gird your loins <laughs> because we're reading the unbreaded. Here we go. Here we go. Okay. Sorry. I got to get into the flow. It's been a little bit. Exist. The Tom needs Binger to be down with staying down. The Tom needs the lesser man to be up on staying above him. The Tom loves to be in the middle like Malcolm, not X, but the lesser one from the program. The Tom can't say ignite it today to Binger people. The Tom is too concerned about a job interview. The Tom don't speak to his people first. The Tom don't speak to his people. The Tom speaks to lesser money. The Tom speaks to lesser status. The Tom is a target for the Matt Harris and the Tommy won't survive very long at all. The Tom is a walking target for Binger American world dominance. The Tom is going to get his lights turned the fuck off, not just his home, but his minstrel fucking dome. The Tom is going to get a good night check. Tom is going to get his deck collapsed. The Tom is going to get a dirt nap. The Tom is going to get what he deserves. Yes, that. It is inevitable. When Binger American World Dominance arrives at your doorstep, Tom is going to get the four-course bullet. Of course, no witnesses, no investigation. We will buy off the police until they are eliminated. They got houses too. Never fear a man who lives in a home. Never fear a man who you don't need. You need many men to die. You need many men to bleed. Protect the men you need, but kill the enemy. The revolution will be immediate. The revolution will be violent. The revolution will change what is tolerated by Binger tribe. Binger tribe will purge enemies in disguise. Binger tribe will purge enemies amongst us and foreign. Binger tribe will kill Tom's hidden in lesser cloaks of status. Binger tribe will assassinate Tom's all across the motherfucking nation. Binger tribe will assassinate Tom's hidden as elders and spokesmen. Binger tribe will hit them up where they sleep on their doorstep. Binger tribe will kill Tom's from TV and university. Binger tribe will kill Tom's with tenure and diversity salesmen too. Binger tribe will kill Tom's who sell our suffering for a salary. Binger tribe will kill them literally by attacking their bodies. No metaphors or apologies. Men will die. Binger tribe will attack in public just to terrorize. Binger tribe will kill Toms just to prove we back. Binger tribe will kill Toms just to strengthen itself. Binger tribe will kill Toms to prove we ain't scared of death. Binger tribe will kill Toms just to prevent others from that path. Binger tribe will kill Toms. Kill Tom! When the man believes he is toxic for being masculine, he is lowered. When the man is raised listening to music that teaches him that women want someone sensitive and emotional, he is being lied to by the world. Women want a man who is strong and stoic. The woman want a man who is powerful and not emotionally pouring himself. Many of our best men have been lied to as the media wants them to think that this is how the world works. When you look at depression, suicide, and unhappiness, failed marriages, and all the problems, that is as culture is giving people bad advice and the wrong lifestyles. The bad parent rewards their child for weakness. If the child cries, the shitty parent gives them something to feel better. The bad parent rewards their child for crying, for giving into pain, for apologizing, for suffering, for being ashamed, for being a weakling, for being upset, and for being unconfident. The bad parent murders their child by calling their son a girl or telling them that their soft feelings, their weak emotions, and their insecurities are attractive. The bad parent gives their children music and media icons that promote and encourage insecurity, instability, and sadness. The bad parent encourages their son to be dramatic and to overexpress his emotional self. The bad parent gives their son examples of masculine success that are sad, over-invested in women's thoughts, and distinguished by their weaknesses more than strengths. The bad parents encourage their son to cultivate emotional sensitivity and treat his vulnerability as a talent or an asset for him to seek in himself. They lie and say that women want that. The bad parents lie and say women want men who respect them by means of being emotionally weak and sad. The lesser role models will encourage the same weakness and servitude in your sons. 
the lesser men hiding as teachers will tell your sons to be gentle and to I'm bread. There you go. See, there's another page where it's like, okay, okay, okay. See now, I'm I'm with him. I'm with him at the end. I like. Yes, <laughs> the, the the emasculation of men, huge problem in society. Uh, how 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 does this guy waffle between these two positions of being a crazy motherfucker and then being also so damn right about what's happening to men? It's amazing. Uh, it's uh that's. That's why we only lost 700 people. That's why we do the unbreaded because it is, it is this interesting dichotomy of wisdom and insanity <laughs> wrapped into one. Now the, the irony of course, is that this man's talking about all this sensitivity and shit. And this whole thing is a weepy bitch fest <laughs> about being emasculated by a woman. That's the funniest part of it. Like this guy's preaching all this strength and 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 like masculinity and stoicism and he's why this bitch be fucking other men like he's crying about this shit at the same time. It's like what happened to you? Uh, okay. Anyway, uh, Red Red Dev Ved says Nix is late as Cynthia before she goes to get her eighty third abortion. This is a pledge for one mil Libri coins. Thank you, Red Dev Ved. Malik Fox says in gaming, sound is critical too. The guy who sounds the best and cleanest in voice chat was always the guy who led the team. My experience in Overwatch League back when I played taught me as much. Mephisto's movie review. Uh, I would donate a hundred bucks, but I can't afford it. But here's your the craft meme. Enjoy. We all need a smile on our face. Firefox, a toast to Larry Larry from in the YouTube chat. Quote, full on barking madness is a state of rational bliss to which you may not aspire. Men living in gutters and drinking their own piss would shun your company. You're a prancing lunatic. Eat hemp and shit rope. If that fails with luck, a shark tries to suck your cock. What? There you go to Larry Larry. Uh, that was, that was your toast. Firefox says Megan seems super fucking based. Granted, I'm two hours behind trying to catch up, but I hope she comes back sometime. Philip Booty says Nick Lady Rackets will recognize who Frank Langella is as he plays Mr. Minister Jero in Deep Space Nine. Oh, there you go. Okay. Herman Armenia says, gotta be honest. Anytime a movie throws tits and ass, I only ever think that the writer has done such a shit job trying to tell a story and wants to distract the audience that they won't walk out and demand their money back. That said, give the people what they demand, open Bob and Vagine. No, it, it has to be done right. And by doing it right, I mean doing it wrong. Herman Arminius says the Romans once used an ancient incantation for divine wisdom that they might know what YouTube download or extension Ricada uses in solidarity of our Latin brethren. Let us pray thrice is rapid succession uh, for God's sake. Q Sobius. Oh, <laughs> I hate you. Herman Arminius. I hate you for that. Uh, you, you, you son of a bitch. Uh, take that. Um, the squid says there's a Jack Black movie about how personality makes the difference between beautiful and ugly as a sin. Shallow how fantastic movie. One of my favorites. A Beckstein, if you want to have a logasm, check your DM. Mandy Karavich says request for unbreaded. Could you read a page uh, as an orc from 40 K replace bingers with boys and all the other racist words with Yumi's and do a wah at the end, please. That would be awesome. Nick, I'd have to work on that. It's hard to keep orc voice up for more than about a sentence. Same with like Elmo and Kermit voice. They get, they get bad. They get bad. Um, okay. We have many chats to do. <laughs> I, I genuinely, don't know how to do what we've got, but I'm going to start 
going through all of them. If you are not a person who hangs around through the chats, I will hopefully see you tomorrow or today, 7.45 a.m., five hours, 42 minutes from now. Um, otherwise, I hope to see you tomorrow. Uh, I, I've been trying to post some recaps, previews of the days. Uh, as trailers for the, uh, live stream, but also just in general, uh, my trailer today was, was just Johnny hugging Camille. Cause I thought that was the best, the best recap of what happened yesterday. Frankly, it was, uh, their team did so fucking well. Um, it was, and it was, it was a good moment too. It was a recognition that, yeah, we, we nailed it. Everybody who felt like they nailed it, they did. It was, uh, it was like solidarity with the chat in a way. Like, no, they, they actually did nail this day. And, um, and it's been, it, it was good. So with that though, uh, I'll try and post some sort of, um, video, you know what I mean? About, uh, recapping and previewing as, as part of the trailer for tomorrow's show. They're three minutes long or less. That's the trailer requirement for YouTube. Um, so we'll, we'll get something up there. But uh, again, if you if you do leave during Super Chats, thanks for hanging out with me. Um, these weeks are really, really hard. Like, uh, don't get me wrong. They're well worth it. Um, and you guys are great. They're great for the channel growth. Uh, Super Chats come rolling in. I'm not complaining. They're just, uh, they're really hard on uh, the sleep schedule. And, and they're hard for the family because I'm in here for so long. And you guys uh, really help even that out. So thanks a bunch. Um, and I hope you enjoy these night shows. Of course, I think if you're still here, you must. Otherwise, you're a masochist. Here we go into the Super Chats. Edit that to Nick saying this week made him hard. Here, Rivan, let me save you. This week made me hard. Oh, shit. I got some audio for you. This is completely unrelated. Hold on. Uh, just a moment. Okay. Here. Uh, um, where is it? Fuck. I have to find this real quick. Sorry. I'm looking for the audio. I, I had it on my phone earlier. Here we go. Here comes the audio. You, you ready? We got the audio for you. Here it goes. Here it goes. <sighs> oh, Ricada. You know what? It's going to be golden. I'm perfectly happy where I'm at. Ricada's fall is going to be so delicious. Listen to what I'm saying. I've been here for a while, and I've seen them come, and I've seen them go. We're going to witness a staggering collapse for Nick Ricada. And it's going to be, listen, I've been here for a while. I'm a tabloid God. I'm telling you now, listen to what I say. It's going to be an unbelievably nasty fall for Nicholas Ricada. I promise you. I promise. I promise you. And it is going to be every fucking drop is going to be delicious and it is going to be ralph we don't want to know about your cum habits nick fuentes is calling <laughs> be careful be careful what you say okay that's uh, that's it i just i just wanted to i wanted to get that out there i wanted to get that out to you guys just so you know what's coming i know you got to know what's coming it's going to be a nasty fall there's so many clips there's so many clips that i've got to upload uh from Here we go. Uh, so many. 
so many clips here real quick. <laughs> this, this is a good one. Uh, damn. Why? Wait, here we go. I hate Twitter's video players sometimes. Here we go. <laughs> Somebody tell me what's going on in this clip. I don't even know. There's so many clips. Bitch. Bitch. The man is a bowl of comedy. Oh my gosh. <laughs> fucking bowl of it. Okay, here we go. <clears throat> that's that's all the nonsense that I Allie Dahl, I'm catching up in 1.75x and I can't handle her already. I'm going to have to come back and watch her later at 2x once I catch up live. Sorry, that's somebody seven. Runkle seated third row behind Amber Heard with James. I think young jury observer DUI guy took notes with. Also, Amber Heard kind of copying Raquel depot attire RB odds. The trial ends with Amber pulling a mask off to reveal. She was actually Ethan Ralph the entire time. And he starts a hollering. He got tied up with yet another set of disloyal shaster lawyers. DJ Tommy V every, every lawyer Ralph said there had ever had has been a disloyal shaster has lost him his case. Um, DJ Tommy V Camille V been kicking ass since depots Alicia Marie Moonray. The whole Thanksgiving thing is BS. Colonel Kurtz on YouTube uploaded a video with Paula Manson's former assistant. She filmed it. Amber was having a good time while Johnny Depp was a mess about his mom. Uh, Super Sentai guy. Matthew Lillard wasn't in. Can't hardly wait. I, I, I don't. <sighs> Shit, that wasn't him. Who was that? Uh... Who am I thinking of? I, I said Matthew Lillard. I see Matthew Lillard. But it's... uh, Who the fuck was that? Jason Siegel. Maybe I'm thinking of Jason Siegel. It's the guy's like, it's Preston, man. That guy, you know who I'm talking about. Fuck. Who was that? No, Ethan Emery was the main guy, but it, I might be thinking of Jason Siegel. It's when Jennifer Love Hewitt is looking for Preston and she comes across the two stoner guys and they're sitting there talking. And I can't think of who... It was Jason Siegel. Who is the other guy who's seen? Brian Klugman? Maybe it is Jason Siegel that I'm thinking of. I think so. Damn, I thought it was Matthew Lillard. Okay, kill me. Kill me, I'm so wrong. So wrong. No, Brecken Meyer was the lead singer of the band, not the same guy. Uh, okay, here we go. Mm -mm -mm -mm. I hate being shown up on that stuff. I can't, it, Man, it looks like Matthew Lillard in my head so much. No, it wasn't Seth Green. He was the wigger guy. Seth Green had a much bigger part. Now I'm I'm thinking I think I'm thinking of Jason Siegel, who is Marshall from uh from How I Met Your Mother. Uh, okay, here we go. Too much time spent on that. Eric says, congrats on 400K. I'm unaffiliated, so I couldn't vote yesterday. Drove my Biden gas back home. Damn, Pennsylvania. Riker, so first Amber abuses Johnny, and now she's abusing the jury with these video depositions. Good to know. Pinkala, the driving ape, has a, 
uh, Roxif, so she wasn't in the room when it happened. The room when it happened. The room when it happened. Thrashify says, I was forced to leave my own home by cops after a girlfriend sliced me. Still have the scar. My friend was there. She was a Canadian citizen. I'm in Minnesota. Why the fuck would I have to leave after being assaulted? Because some bullshit. Jason Siegel is in Can't Hardly Wait. Okay, you know what? Now this is bothering me. I need to go to bed and I'm doing this. It is, it's Jason Siegel who I'm thinking of. Here, I'll show you the scene. Like, I'm not going to play the whole scene. Um, I'll just show you the image of it. I was thinking Matthew Lillard because he always plays a goofy motherfucker. But so does Jason Siegel. So here it is. Here he is. Right here. Jason Siegel. This is the scene I was thinking of. Like, it's like Preston. Preston! That's, so, okay. Whew, resolve that. Very, very important. Very important. Thrashifies, uh, John Sinantis. Which incident is she testifying to? Jacoby Davis. Just my two cents, but this killing Amber Heard's team from eating up time alone, isn't it? G Man, will Jesse Smollett uh, come up in closing arguments? Maybe. Scott Johnson, punching with rings causes cuts to face and damage to the fingers and uh, in the rings and those cuts cause scars Pink call the driving ape. Did they put this depot up to run off the clock? Uh, suck my dick. So string it hawking post wall freeloader. Roasty tries to handle thoughts more complex than her own reflection. The deposition Mo way too much delay. Did you see injuries or not? Adam Bolin possible ear piece with these slow answers. Her attorneys in the room. I mean, no, I don't. Again, I, I think people, if they did an earpiece for any of this stuff and it got caught ever, it'd be huge. So it happens rarely, but come on. Uh, Jamie Anthony, the hair looks like a dog's hair from a brush. Also, it seems Raquel is coming across as I'm not high enough for this crap. Mean girl to me. Beefy comb from the UK. Me and my fiance have been watching since Rittenhouse and learned a lot. Can we get a shout out to, uh, for her gaming channel, Tiger Jelly? Yes. Check out Tiger Jelly. Jasper Cochran, check Raquel's Instagram story. 11 Bravo Crunchy. I wouldn't touch that because she would probably just be bored with, with it 10 minutes before the first article of clothing hit the floor. Joe Pancakes, first time chat, love the stream. These two video depots don't seem to help the defense much, especially this broad with all that said Camille. Yum. Light giver. The reason Rocky's testimony was bad is she can't remember her original lies. Let me do some from today. I think today is, is maybe more important to hit right now or the tonight. You know what I mean? Contrarian 420. I love that the balls or no balls question is going to be the thing that keeps Nick from getting the Mason shoulder tap. Hashtag saved by food has. Kevin Malk, glad we got this. Megan Fox and not the blood drinking one. Concert LD. Amber Heard mocks TikTok people by wearing bee earring. So let's see. Isabel Jimenez during Whitney's cross. The groundwork was laid to introduce Jennifer Howell, but they didn't pursue. You think she'll be testifying? Again, they could introduce Jennifer Howell, her letter on cross, or they could just bring Jennifer Howell. Uh, on rebuttal, which would be more powerful. Um, uh, Sheriff Jack, welcome to Paralegal Kalinka Pavlova. Generic white male was the most charismatic. Lol. Uh, Intergalactic Pro, the body cam came after the depots. Uh, Kristen Bradshaw, Amber's people didn't want to come in. Most aren't even her friends anymore. Those depots were old and Johnny did some live zooms. Infinite Abyssal Dragon 25, Deus Volt. Uh, Andrew Wilhelm says, more Megan Fox, please. This has been a fantastic show. Geek Girl Amanda says, Isaac Baruch would be the gadget guy. It's Amica Cream, right? Uh, Nurkum 103, 1030, Depp and Bettany in Supernatural Reboot or Prequel. 
Amy Horrell, witnesses coming up, police expert Adam Berkovici, social media forensic expert Ron Schnell, Amber's former attorney Michael Michelle Mulvaney, and Johnny Depp's attorney from the UK. Thoughts? No. I don't really have thoughts. Uh, they're they're going to be trying to build their case against Adam Waldman's statements um, on, on all of this stuff. So that'd be the social media forensic expert. They got to, they got to bring out that Amber Heard's career was impacted by Adam Waldman's statements. And that's the way you got to do it. The police expert, he's going to say that the four police officers didn't do a sufficient job. That's, that's the whole purpose there that, that even though he wasn't there that day, that those four police officers should have definitely arrested and probably murdered Johnny Depp. Uh, intergalactic pro acting coach is a fellow grifter. Why AC tells us two impossible things. One Amber heard works hard and two Amber heard is a good person. She was a secret weapon given scripts. Apple pie. I'll suggest this plot to my tabletop RPG group next time. Kingslayer 007. Please stop it. Nest of vampires. Oh my God. I can't take it anymore. I'm going to pee myself. No more witches jokes, please. And a bunch of laughing emojis. Patty leather says, uh, Nigdi ni bedzies bielim polakium be a Polish, I think, or be naizitiem nozem mazi obawazik uchalyak swoj jesse i wirzil wiliad z mikilim jonesum. You should. See uh Polskiego Bads Katalikum. I don't know what that means, but I assume it means lick my fucking balls. Uh, <laughs> something in Polish. What's on my shirt? Looks badass. Uh this is a this is a salamanders logo that someone did for me a long time ago. Uh, in the particular style that they do shirts, uh, someone who watched the show sent it in a long time ago. Adventure Adventures in Laurenland says. Also, my question was in was R E the depth trial. I just hopped onto the stream. Uh, what was your question? I think we read it. Oh well, I I don't know where it is. Sorry. Um, Walrus Aurelius, Johnny needs to get his seven mil back and donate it to the Catholic Church to exercise his penthouse. Nick got a gunt growing. Oh, yeah, it's been a while. Been a while. Oh, see, now I want to know what this fucking Polish is. My ADD is kicking in. I, I need to go to bed, but. You will never be a white pole, not with this nose. You have a duty to raise your children in faith. Interview with Michael Jones. Learn Polish. Be Catholic. <laughs> there you go. That's what it said. There you go. Uh, <laughs> Vaz Kalma says, Rackets is the best at pulling incredible guests out of nowhere. She should be on that regular status. Fun show. Kyle Mitchell says, on the DUI guy, Twitter has a pic of Whitney sitting next to Runkle and James from court. It's awesome. Uh, K to the Swiss says, shut up and take my money or just keep talking. Whatever, do what you want. We know you're going to do it anyway. Bon Necron, she played the book enthusiast with two different guys that we know of. Classic succubus technique, the mirror back, which you want to see. Uh, Nicholas Cero, is it possible people are giving that witness guy too much credit? He looks good because the rest of her team are so immensely crappy. Yes, very, very possible. Very, very possible. Not applicable. This is a really good argument for not putting very much info about yourself online. If you're dating, people actually have to get to know you that way. Pro preseason cookware. Oh, God bless you. Amber listening to blank space on repeat. Find out what you want. Be that girl for. Yeah. Be that girl for a month. Wait. The worst is yet to come. Oh, no. Because it's going to be forever. Or it's going to go down in flames. You can tell me when it's over. 
If the high was worth the pain. Sorry. Dispatch indirect. Great show. Megan definitely classed up this joint. Mr. Hedgebull. Note Amber Heard keeps her coffee between her and Elaine. Slingblade. The makeup artist testified that she could create bruises and cover up bruises with makeup. Anyone catch that? Yes. Yep. We did. No more. Got a long list of ex-lovers. They'll tell you I'm insane. I've got a blank space, baby. I'll write your name. Kem uh, is live. Hey, Nick. Seems you have pissed off the Chinese bots for some reason. Can you spam every phrase you know that the CCP would hate? Yeah. <laughs> Uh, yeah, Taiwan number one, China number four, China asshole. Uh, ben George, uh, Mao was a cuck. Take that. Mao was a cuck, and Xi Jinping uh, likes to Jinping little boys. Kem is life. Says, hey, Nick, uh, wait, uh, Ben George, Amber will definitely sue her attorneys. Heard nar narcissism dictates it. That's why she kept this going. Kate J, by the saint. Heard Fauci candle set for two for the price of one. Levels of narcissism and arrogance may vary. Uh, you want to put my hands around my fat, hairy neck every time I sing? Well, don't threaten me with a good time. I'm going to sing more just to piss you guys off. One day I'm going to get drunk and just sing every eight minutes. Um, Bo Stoker, the real question, are traps gay? She already answered that they are. Space Force Commander, It's not if it's not clear, we, Nick's chat, have a drinking problem. Avaheim says, is that water behind Megan? Hot tub stream now or kick her? Also, beer gives guys big chesticles. Real men drink whiskey or gin. Carlos Estrada is Kevin willing to be unbreaded? Who the fuck is Kevin? SDFU FFS. Megan Fox has big toes for thumbs. It's very weird. Patty Leather. Chicago is Irish Catholic, not black. Polack. Be Catholic. Chicago. Uh, your town's being overrun by people you don't seem to like. Uh, KW New York Upstate says the Windy City puts beans on hot dogs also. Gross. Kino Corner. What's the most Kino Satoshi Kon movie? I have no idea. Steven Loomis, those thumbs, though. Guy Vermecton, welcome to Paralegal Status. STFUS FFS says Nick Tahoe's white hot garbage plate for the win. Uh, Chris Clements, my brother has a toe thumb because he fell and jammed his thumb, which broke the growth plate. So it got bigger, but never got longer. So it's a chode. <laughs> Weird. Uh, Michaela Michael, I have toe thumbs. Be nice. <laughs> Von Necron says Grace Randolph is convinced that Hollywood is done with Johnny Depp, despite what the public thinks. As a Hollywood shill, she may understand their ways. No, I, it's it's a long shot prospect. That's why I says I said no matter what the public sentiment is, when he has a movie deal, that's when it matters. But it's also going to matter, like if if people like if people like um, uh, Robert Downey Jr. will fight to put Johnny Depp in movies and show that his movies will still sell the same. That's how you get Johnny Depp into movies. You gotta have, you gotta have someone willing to fight. And if he's given enough ammo to people like RDJ who have pulled to fight for him, then you, you got it. Uh, amateur Anth Megan Fox is a way better fit for Nick than tug was, especially on the night show crown target. Any chance some of the neutral articles by big media are R2 can point at them later or so they can point at them later as justification for claiming they weren't biased earlier. Uh, possible. Madam Von Kook, just an FYI, actress Megan Fox has uh, brachydactyl type D, which is a genetic trait of club thumbs. Genitals. Nick, I made it. The Ralph of Mail blocked me on Twitter. Apparently he can make fun of people for working at Burger King, but I can't make fun of him for making less than them. Much love, man. No homo. Timothy Reaver says, do you think Heard pays Shane in booty grabs? Uh, no, I think she probably despises him. 
which is why she you hire a slime ball, right? When you need something slimy. Timothy Reaper, do you, uh, no, Cure says Elon paid Amber Heard 1 million or 0. 000, 000, 000, 0.00002 of his net worth is equivalent to the average American yearly salary of 0. 00002 is two bits. So Elon essentially called Amber Heard a two bit whore. Timothy Reaper, are you a banana? Because you're very appealing. Thrash advice, message retracted, STFU. Can you tell Megan she's absolutely wrong about Nick Tahu's white hot garbage plate? But if she can endorse spaghetti chili, I can let it slide. Eric Winberg, Megan Fox is a pistol. Please invite her back. Oh, I will. It was a great show. I Asia Frazier says, Megan, uh, F you, Missouri. I'm offended. Uh, Stephen Loomis, this is the Megan Fox I follow. Let's talk about prepping. This, that's impressive, Megan, but don't say it three times fast in the dark in front of a mirror. mirror. You're hilarious. Great show. Team Balls. Uh, I like how she's like, wait, making me say gang rape over and over. This is a joke, right? <laughs> no, I just, I couldn't gang rape, gang rape, get gang. I can't do it. Michael Sanger, Ron Swanson. Nah, Josh will be played by Zach Gillifinakis in the upcoming movie about the trial. Michael Lude read that one. Melissa Williamson, Nick. Okay, please. I think it's supposed to be please, not okay. Toast to my extreme pain of testing and doing data validation to switch to a complete new AMS. I'm literally dying inside. What the fuck is an, a new AMS? American Mathematical Society, Meteorological Society, AMS Performance. I don't know what the fucking AMS is. American Musical Supply. I don't know what that means. Agricultural Marketing Service. Maybe that's it. Uh, Melissa Williamson, to your pain, to your suffering, though it may be delicious to others, we know you are enduring it for something better. Cheers to you. May it bring you to a better tomorrow. Still don't know what an AMS is. Brandon James, intimacy coordinators will soon be required on college campuses before every dorm room smash. And they'll stand there watching, ready to blow a whistle like a ref. And there'll be a bunch of lame dudes signing up for it. No, I'll do it. American legend. Listen, Nick's married, but I'm not. And you're awesome. Yeah, let's talk sometime. Shooting my shot. American legend. I think she's been married longer than me. Cars in depth just to annoy the Jew haters in the chat. A toast to my 10 year old grandson who has started learning Talmud, his six year old brother. Already reads Hebrew. Lahayim. Uh, here we go. Just a second. Whew, that morning is coming up quick. Coming up quick to uh to cars in depths. Grandsons. 10 years old and six years old being raised in tradition, being raised to read and honor God. May they never stop learning and never forget those roots and never let them be corrupted by modernity. Embrace tradition. As a fiddler reference, Jews will understand. Thomas McKay, we need more uh, Lycia Naff from Total Recall. <laughs> the three titty chick. Michael Sanger, director Paul Verhoeven, always was nude when filming nude scenes just to be a team player, slash make his actors feel like not the only nude person. No, he was not. Uh, the Kino Corner, there needs to be way more nudity in movies, way more. TJ Ventura, I agree with Megan. We don't need society any more degenerate than it already is. TJ Ventura, Nick equals libertarian. Meg, Megan equals conservative. I respect both. See, I, I, it's getting more degenerate without the nudity. The nudity wasn't the degeneracy. That's, that's the lie. The lie is that the nudity is the degeneracy, but it's not. Like, like, uh, like anything, it's about how it's, done words can hurt harm people but words aren't inherently harmful 
right? Like aside from terms of service issues, you could say any racial slur on the planet. Who cares? Like just in a vacuum, just go out into the wilderness and just scream the N word with no one around. Like, who did you offend? What did you do for yourself? Nothing. It's, it's just a word. It's just a thing. It's pointless. Just like when you're naked alone. I mean, it's pointless. No one, no one cares. You can be naked in public or in like an elementary school. You should probably be shot in the face. Or like if you're David Shane, you try and grab people in a, like touching people is okay. Touching people like you're David Shane, Amber Heard's publicist who likes to touch people inappropriately. That is not okay. Uh, Cornelius butt knuckle with all this talk about sex scenes. Can we get a toast to team America world police? The greatest movie sex scene ever recorded. That one's pretty good to team America. Fuck. Yeah. Oh shit. Keown that drew guy said Amber had late night visitors at least 30 times after she changed the locks in her place. Use a hoe. Kidda, did you see the Fifth Circuit ruled the SEC having its own court system violates the Seventh Amendment and Congress isn't actually allowed to delegate lawmaking to unelected bureaucrats? If this stands apocalyptic for the swamp. It's great. It's great. Uh, the SEC had the power to basically impose criminal, criminal fines on people, criminal sanctions on people without without due process so fucking of course that's the right decisions great and and kyle kuklinski is out there bitching about it fuck off like the state needs more control oh my god control yourself into a toilet bon necron says when the angels showed up in sodom the locals demanded that lot turn them over so they could have their way with them seems like we're headed there yeah exactly not applicable your chat aren't conservatives weird but oh well I think a lot of them are, but a lot of them aren't. And that's fine. Shekelstein says, Megan, we need your artistic performance of unbreaded, pretty, pretty, please. Melissa Williamson says, nickel, the nose pickle. I was swamped with work today and couldn't tune in. Main recap of today, by the way, 10 minutes away from courthouse help getting in. I can't help you get in. I have, I have zero help for you. Sorry. Uh, Melissa, if you're still there. There were, there were video depositions that were effectively pointless. The best one was Josh Drew. Um, I don't think it was super helpful to Amber Heard, but it was at least something. Whitney, uh, her testimony was extremely limited and I think hurt Amber Heard because the story was wildly different than Amber's story on the staircase. The only story that matters from Whitney Heard is the staircase. She's the only witness to physical violence from Johnny Depp other than Amber Heard herself. And her story was so hyperbolic that I, I don't think anybody believed it. Re Troopers, thank you for the donation. Ragnarok Star says, please check email. Sent you craft Photoshop of Amber. Re Troopers sent another donation. STFU says, Johnny Depp's management company embezzled a fug ton of his money. Yep. Evie Warner, Eve Barlow. Fuck, where do we go? Has retweeted blue check marks saying in 10 years we will be seeing a documentary about how we were wrong about Amber Heard. Oh man. Crown Target. Megan, come back for next time. I think she will. I think she will. Joshua Panola Harris probably recognizes the weaknesses in himself. It's likely. John, I pray that you can share Umbrella with Jordan Peterson one day. Um I think this is a, a very troubled individual and um, I might diagnose him with a couple different things. Howard. Larry, thanks for your message being retracted. Thrash vice per the CDC, 70% of domestics are by women. Thrash of everyone mad about smashing plates, go to a fat blue haired anger management place, smash plates and windows to ease your anger. Loretta silver member. When you said squeeze the mic, uh, squeeze sc or excuse the McKellen, uh, boys, Mc McClickham. I felt that. I don't know. Boz McClick. I don't know what that fucking means. See Hunter yoga stream on Twitch after the depth trial. Uh, that's the idea. We'll get it done soon. Carlos Estrada wasn't Karen, Kevin, the manager that Megan talked about. 
STF uses DEP as a box office gold as of right now, but if we let the left have too much slack, they'll memory hold the truth. Are Amber Heard and retcon the trial? Uh, official R I official re Nirvana says here's five dollars for you not sleeping and staying awake through depots. Dead on Leprechaun will DEP be the main rebuttal from Duluth Nick? I think Doctor Muffins is coming back, and I think whatever the the chick that Amber Heard um. The chick that Amber heard, uh, or sorry, that wrote Whitney to say that she knows that didn't happen might be on rebuttal. The other person they might pull on rebuttal is a digital uh, or a forensic expert to talk about the metadata and the color saturation in the photos. Might. I don't know if they're going to. It's boring. It, it takes a lot of time, but they might do it. They could just handle, they could handle the photos on cross by just laying them over each other. Here's the two photos. Clearly, this is an edited photo. They edited these photos because they knew that if they showed you the original photos, you wouldn't see any injuries. The edited photos don't show injuries either. Um, Johnny Souza, I know this is off topic, but I was thinking about going to pilot school, but I'm scared to get an $88,000 loan. Some companies require full vaccination. Dude, it's, it's like anything, man. It's a lot of risk. So the question is, do you love it? Do you, will you pilot? Will you pilot a small plane? Will you pilot for not enough money to pay back the loan? Will you have that student debt hanging over your head for the rest of your life? Because you love flying or the idea of it. That's the question. Can you do it? Can you deal with the schedule? SCFU says that decision will never be respected, much like Tim's versus Indiana. It will be conveniently ignored by status and institutionalists. Justin Gallant, thank you for the donation. Emorsk says, for both of you, do you think Amber Heard might be in danger of self-harm if she loses? Uh, first of all, um, no. Second of all, Amber Heard's in no more danger of self-harm if she loses versus if she wins. Uh, if, she's, if she hasn't self-harmed like seriously by now, um, I really don't think that that's going to change Two, it doesn't matter. Sorry. Self-harm is not a reason to even consider in a trial. Bailey seven, the Weinstein school of acting where you learn to swallow and get a red nose. Kyan Rennell as a 13 year old, I went to the theater to see Desperado with my dad. The first 30 minutes of violence were fine. Then Selma Hayek got naked, not Selma Hayek, by the way, someone else. And things got awkward. However, I knew I was straight that night. Yeah, that was a Selma Hayek body double on that one. I have many, many chats left from this morning. And I don't, I can't do them. It's almost three. I'm going to have to figure something out. <sighs> Let me do a couple of them. I'll go, I'll go a couple more minutes, but we gotta, we gotta wrap it up. Obsidian Sinclair, Runkle of the Filthy Knife Ears, Winston Dupree, your honor. I would like to withdraw my vote to smash Miss Pentagrass. John 316, 2000 Mules, 200 Watt Studio, F. Mary, Kill Rocky, Camille, Dr. Mommy. Kill Rocky. Fuck Dr. Mommy and Mary Camille. That's an easy one. That's one of the easiest fuck Mary kills ever. Rocky Pennington was, I mean, first you wouldn't want to be married to her. And two, I didn't think she was that attractive. Dr. Mommy's super smoking hot, but do you want to be married to a psychologist? Oh, fuck that. And then Camille, uh, she seems just nice. Too many clamps. Sometimes when you look at Amber, she gets that Zuck sweet baby Ray's look on her face. Etienne de Gaulle, Nick, how are they allowed to present this without the possibility of cross-examination? Um, all of the depots have cross-examination built in. Get some sleep, Nick, and read them later on the lunch break tomorrow. I'll have, no, I'll have a whole bunch more on the lunch break tomorrow. I won't have time to read the ones from today. That's the problem with it. You get behind the ball on these things and they they just... You can't catch up. Jerk off juggernaut. Not complaining, by the way. 
Amber trying to fake cry while Rocky fake cries is great. Dude, that's the one thing I wish they would have asked that fucking uh, acting coach about. Tell me more about Amber's inability to cry. She's not a good fake crier. Maybe stop chat. You can't stop chats. There, there, there isn't a way to turn off super chats for like a time. It's stupid. Malik Roach says, you don't need guests. You're great alone. Hey, thank you. I've thought about that a lot. Uh, chat. I'll ask you one last question. Um, as I, as I read like a couple, just a few more chats, literally just a few more chats. Uh, do you guys like having guests on the, the depth streams? Or do you like him solo? I don't know. Emily Baker's over there doing him solo and doing great. I like some guests. I don't want like a million though. And any guest is a risk to like talk when I don't necessarily want them to, but they also help when I'm tired. So. I, I definitely don't like having nine guests on. It's too fuck too fucking much. Brank is such a great guest. What a, what a bro he is. He doesn't even really like civil trials. He comes, hangs out and watches these things. Uh, Drex 24 seven have Drexel read some take turns with Drexel. That sounds gay. I like the guests that know not to talk over the trial. The whiteboard is hilarious. Yeah. I, I really like legal mindset. Bring guests every now and then. Yeah. I mix it up. Um, I, the hard part about guests is you, you, you don't know who's available on any given day. So like some people are on legal bites of stream, which again, people are trying to make drama about, but I, I have personally said I would prefer people go on legal bites of stream. But as a result of this, I don't know who's like available to come on my show if I throw the link into the main, like the, the lawyer bloodthirsty trap, then maybe I'll get one person. Maybe I'll get 10. I don't know. And, uh, and once you send a link, you can't like turn it off, you know, like, Oh, I got, I got two people. I'm done. So I, you have to kind of pick individually and you always leave somebody out. It's weird. I don't know too much fucking drama on all this stuff. I just want to watch a trial and laugh. Yakimo says, as a researcher, may I make a suggestion? Have someone punch Amber Heard in the nose, then observe the reaction. Alicia Marie Moonray on break. Everyone watch Colonel Kurtz's video. Amber lied about Thanksgiving. She's video proof. Amber was happy and Johnny Depp was a wreck. And she's a creep. Maybe they'll introduce it. Who knows? Maybe they'll call. Maybe they'll call. Uh, what should we call it? Uh, Marilyn Manson or his assistant in to testify on rebuttal. Be a guest on the next trial. As a guest, you don't need to read Super Chats. You can talk or leave whenever you want. Hmm. I like doing the trials. <laughs> like, I like doing them. Uh, I like the growth for the channel. Um, obviously, this is my job, so the income is super helpful. Um, but, but I also just, I like doing them. I like being on the show. That's why it was like, you're like trade off with other people. I was like, I don't want to fucking trade off. That's weird. I, I want to do the trials I'm going to cover. So yeah. Um, eh, we'll see. We'll see. Okay. I'm going to bed. Thanks for joining me guys. Your sage council is always welcome. Even if I don't, uh, always take it. Uh, it is, it is always welcomed. So that's with that said, I'll be uh, seeing you guys in, well, I'll be seeing some people in about five hours. Catch you then. Have a good night, guys. Peace. Peace. He drinks a fair bit, but you realize that It just helps get his noggin jogging along With his glass by his side and his kids asleep tight We'll hear some lost planning tonight With his microphone muted, we'll laugh at this boomer Until he explains it's all part of the plan
watch his face become red as he becomes better, raging at idiots from Twitter and Erland. From the white shores of Maine to the hills of Glenlivet, there's no one who plays the part better than Nick. So pour out a glass for the ones who have passed, make the law what we have now. Oh, his lady is fair, and she handles herself with the grace of one who has borne many children. As the wife of a lawman, she makes sure that he has the time and the place to provide for them there. So pour out an art bag of Balmor and Lovebrook. Spirits flow as the ones who get on the boat. So pour out a glass for the tea post on Twitter as we hear us playing tonight. From the white shores of Nam to the hills of Glen Levitt, there's no one who explains the thought better than me. So pour out a glass for the ones who have passed to make the law what we have now. Oh, the guests are all plentiful, from Doug T to Drexel. They bring their perspective and spice to the mix. But the reason we're here and the one that we cheer is the one who is showcasing us his career. Who have passed to make the love what we have.